we go, everybody. Don't stop believing. It is day one, day two, no, day three of New Agent Class 23-007. So we are going to see if, in fact, all 29 of you can get this right. Erica, are you ready? Here we go. New Agent Class 23-007. How are we doing this morning? We're doing great. Awesome. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, great. We're doing great. Awesome. Oh, my goodness. Well, luckily, we have more days we're going to spend together. We're going to work on timing. Okay? We're going to work on timing. If that's okay. Thank you very much. Help me wake up this morning. Nice, brisk morning in Central California. I can't complain whatsoever. Hopefully, we all had a good evening yesterday. I know I watched a bunch of presentations from folks, worked with a number of people after the fact, but we're going to find out what all of you did today. So let's start with Steve Asser, or sorry, I can't remember how to pronounce the name. Steve, good morning. How are you doing? How was your day yesterday? Uh, it was pretty good. Um, did a little studying, uh, spent some time with the family. That's about it, though. Did you work with your upline yesterday? Yes, I did. Okay. What did you do with them? Uh, we went over, basically, we went, went over a class, and they um, uh, gave a little bit more insight on kind of like their strategies and um, and basically went over like the overall plan for us. And then I was having a little bit of, <clears throat> um, well, my, he paired me up with somebody else to discuss the exam since I'm still working on mine. Uh, oh, okay, gotcha. So I'll... Uh, so I spent the rest of the time working with somebody on my exam and kind of like good tactics and stuff like that to take. Awesome. Who's your upline? Uh, my upline is Gavin. Gavin, uh, I can't pronounce his last name, but Gavin G. <laughs> That's right. Is that in uh, the U.S.? I can't remember where he is. He is in Canada. Canada. Okay, you're Canadian. Gotcha. And you got your provincial. I, I'm, I'm, your in, I'm in I'm in. I'm in the U.S., but he's... Okay, so he... Oh, wow, yeah. Okay, well, good stuff. I'm glad you were able to chat with your upline yesterday. Barbara Cunningham, good morning. Did you work with your upline yesterday? Good morning. I did not work with my upline yesterday. I don't know if you remember, but he said that I will wait till next week to get started. So I'll oh, actually... Oh, Francisco Pena, right? So actually, I just I was, I'm studying for my um, health uh, exam. I have life, but I need to get health. Okay, excellent. Uh, did you get access to HP Pro? You did, right? Yes. And did you uh, reach out? Did they have a conversation with you about how to download a app? Um, I know I have it downloaded. Oh, okay, good. All right, perfect. I was just checking in. Jenny Moss, I don't know. I don't even know how your day. Actually, I just want to know how your day went. I don't even know if you work with your upline because <laughs> you, you know how to do this. But how did your evening go yesterday? Good. Yeah, and no, I did not work with my upline. Mm -hmm. um, I think yesterday was the last day of the contest, right? So I'm kind yes. of like, okay, get that done. I'm sure they'll be with me tonight. Um, so no, I didn't do any dials or anything last night. Just spent a heck of a lot of time online looking for the answer to your question. Oh, well, we'll come back to that. So yeah. we'll, come, we'll ask you later what the answer is. Yeah. And then I just reviewing um, the new scripts because they're different than what I, I was using. That was my Yeah, night. they're a little different, but it, it'll, it'll all work out, right? We get to ask uh, how was your night? Oh, my gosh. My, I, I, I worked here. I don't know. I watched a lot of uh, presentations from other teams yesterday. Nice. Yeah. I, I do that so I can get a sense of what the field is doing things of that nature. I think I was in Ashley Rust's there for a while. I think I saw, who did I see? It's Terry, were you in there? Erica, were you in there? Yeah, I think, Terry, were you there? Which which group was that? Ashley Rust? Yes. Corey yes. Fields, whatnot? Yeah, okay, perfect. So I watched them for a while, then I watched a couple of the other uh, GAs. So yeah, that was what my evening consisted of. I think I finished work around 9.30. Can I ask real quick? I would like to watch presentations. Should I wait for my upline to invite me, or is there somewhere I can hop in? Uh, who's your upline? Eddie Leon. Oh well, Eddie. They have a certain way that they do it over there, where they assign one person per day out of the week. 
that they allow all everybody to watch. So you mm. just got to ask him, hey, who should I be watching and where do I need to go? If they have any issues, then yeah, certainly I can give you access to some as well. Okay. Okay. All right, Erica Price, did you work with your upline yesterday? I know the answer. I did. Okay, outstanding. And did they help you from the technical standpoint? Because I think you had some technical issues, right? Yes, I, they did. So I think just getting the processes and systems in place will be helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we went over a lot, actually. It was very informative. It was really good. Did you get to listen to some dialing? We did. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we actually had um, like a manager follow up on a call and see the kind of how that works out too. Um, and then the scheduling piece, I know the managers have different schedules. That was interesting mm -hmm. to see actually for us um, how to do that. So we had, inf you know, information into that. We went over the phone scripts a bit mm -hmm. um, and kind of deep dived into HP Pro. Mm -hmm. um, when we get into the, the other tabs and pages and kind of what that looks like and how to know oh. if you get a certain number of no's that, you know, they get their uninsurable. Ah, so we talked a little bit about field underwriting. Yes. Yeah, maybe a little much ahead of the game, but hey, that's great that they did that. <clears throat> it's always good. Now you can teach this morning's class on HP Pro, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm not Terry, kidding. Terry I'm might serious. be able to. <laughs> no, 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 Erica. It's going to be you because you were there. <laughs> okay, uh, it's going to be me. <laughs> Rebecca Browning, did you work with yes. your upline yesterday? Uh, not in the extent that you would think I was working on paperwork and trying to get access to everything. So, but I do have HBO X, HP Pro access and Planet access. Yay, that's awesome. I forget who's your upline. I, I can never remember. Uh, it's either Begonia or Francisco Perez. Francisco, yeah, it's Begonia. Francisco is the MGA. Begonia is underneath him. Holden Clark, what about you? So I actually was um, absent for the first two days. I'm just getting caught up today. So I haven't really gotten too far along in the process, but I'm looking forward to getting the ball rolling. Mm. Who's your upline? It would be Begonia as well. So Begonia told you to attend the class today, even though you missed the first two days. Yes. Uh, between him and Francisco, we had a little bit of a technical error. Um, we're all sorted out now, but they wanted to get me in regardless. And then I'll just get caught up on the two days that I missed. Okay, do you have the, uh, the day one email? Do you have anything? Yes, yeah, I just got that last night around midnight. So I'm a little bit delayed, but I'm going to work to get caught up on everything. Who did you get the day one email from? So that is part of the problem. For some reason, they were having an issue getting anything through to my email address. So we came up with the idea yesterday, just kind of make a new one and see if we could get things working. And for some yeah. reason, everything's smooth on that email address. Uh, so I'm just kind of getting into everything. But as far as the information that I sh should have received prior to this class, unfortunately, I, I kind of uh, walked in on the dark here. Okay. So there's a lot of information that I have to send you. So can you put your email uh, in the uh, DM me in the chat? Yeah. So yeah, I can add my database because, yeah, yeah, you're missed a very significant day yesterday. Miguel Solo. Solo. Oh, my goodness. Miguel Soto. How are you? Good morning. Pretty good, pretty good. Thank you. Did you uh, work yes, with your upline? Uh, very minimally. I had to work with them to get access to uh, the HP, which I finally did. And then I watched the video from day one since I wasn't here on day one. Okay, good. And how about yesterday? Um, sorry, yesterday you were here. Okay, got you. So I'm with you now. All right. Uh, let's go one more person. Shahir Shahid. Holy mackerel, Shahir Shahid. I am going to screw that up in the future. I'll do my best not to, though, Shahir. Go ahead. How no was worries. your day yesterday after you left me? It, it was a good day. I worked with my upline. Uh, we made a bunch of calls. I made, in total, 15 calls. Uh, I, I had the chance to talk to one person. Uh, there was a lot of no calls, a lot of voicemails yesterday. And mm -hmm. I got to see a presentation close, uh, which was really cool. And it was actually <laughs> by Justin, who's actually on this call. It was his first uh, presentation close. So I'm sorry, you got to say that again. Who who's on this call? What? 
Uh, Justin Godwin. I saw him uh, present for the first time yesterday, and he actually closed the person. Uh, so Justin closed, and when you say closed, they actually went through to uh, DocuSign. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, okay, let's go to Justin since he's closing. Where are you at, Justin? Okay, there you are. So, right Justin, here. do you have an agent number already? Yeah, I just came in last week. Okay, gotcha. And so, is this a lead or is this somebody that you knew? This was a referral from my upline. And he told me to do the no cost. And I I don't know what happened. I just did the whole presentation and then he didn't say anything. And then I closed him. <laughs> so, you actually used eApp to close? So he did EAP. Okay, gotcha. Understood. I'm just trying to make sure that I know what happened. That's great. Congratulations that you went through your first process and you actually got you. someone to agree that, yes, they want to close or they want to buy. I think that's outstanding. All right, everybody, what are we doing today? First and foremost, uh, Zach has a question. Zach, I didn't get back to you yet with your answer because they didn't get back to me yet. So as soon as I get an answer, I will know who you're supposed to meet with. Right. Or, let, or did they tell you directly? No, they did. Okay. So Zach, your headset, microphone. Yeah. It doesn't work. All right. So we'll move. So Zach, if you can hear me, don't unmute yourself because your headset microphone isn't working. Is it working? All right, so here's what we're going to do with Zach. We're going to put Zach in the waiting room, and then we're going to bring him back. So that way we kill his audio. All right, uh, so we need to go over HP Pro again because there's a number of things we need to talk about, but we have to make sure we understood what the heck we did yesterday. And luckily for all of us, Erica Price is going to be our person oh, since she received so much information yesterday from Ashley Russell's team. She is going to teach us how well, to build the actual plans. So, Erica, I know I'm putting you a little bit on the spot. I will be here to help you. But what I want you to do okay. is share your screen and I'm going to walk you through the process. Okay. Okay. And well, yes. I need to get in there first. Well, it probably be a good Pro. idea. Yeah, I think it would be a good <laughs> idea if every if everybody logged into HP Pro, everybody had their student or their uh, agent packet open. That might be a really good idea. I think it would help facilitate the process. In the meantime, I'm going to send. <laughs> huh, um, I'm sorry. What was his name? The new person. Where'd you? That go? was me. Uh, my name's Holden. There you go, Holden. Yes, I'm going to send you everything right now. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, oh, oh. Hey, Erica, whenever you're ready, you let me know. Okay, I will, thanks. What, I'm sorry? I will let you know, I'm just pulling it up right now. Okay. uh who was the individual yesterday that talked to us about how to access or monday talked to us about how to access the uh google drive files that i'm sending i don't you were a gentleman if i remember correctly was it you miguel no who was it i think it was zachary no because zachary has never been able to chat on the thing without blowing up the volume are you referring to request access Sam? Yeah, because I'm getting that tons was of me. that was I was one of them. Okay, Faisal. Yes. Hey Faisal, can you do me a favor and put it in the chat for everybody? How to access that without having to request or whatever you told us to do. That oh, made it sorry. Easy. Oh, um, I didn't explain what to do. I just I requested access from you, and then you oh, gave it. Everybody's requesting access. I okay. thought there was somebody who told me how to do it easily. Yeah, it was it was. Uh... Zachary. It he was Zach? 
Yeah, he hasn't been on. A different Zach. It's the other yeah. Zach. Okay. The yeah, other. yeah. The college student. I remember he's off today because he can't make it. All right. Uh, wow. Anyway, I'm going to create a, a Google Drive access and send the link to everybody. So that way you can just get it without having to wait for me. Because every time you try to open one, it then asks me for access, even though I gave it to you already. So when we take a break, I'm going to try to do that. Erica, I'm going to give you a choice, Erica. I'm going to help you out. We could either watch a video of the credit union presentation with Johnny Ning, who's an international um, sales agent, or we can wait for you to bring up HB Pro and walk us through HB Pro. What would you like us to do? Um, can we do the video first? Sorry, sure. I'm trying to get all of my screens situated. No, it's totally fine. Don't <laughs> worry about it. Thank I you. understand completely. Thank you. All right, so let me find Mr. Johnny Ning and we will get that watched. So we're gonna, so how many people here by a show of hands, please, digitally, have not seen a presentation at all? Have not seen a presentation. You gotta put your hands digitally because I can't see it. <clears throat> and keep them up for me if you would. Give me a second to get there. Since there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13, 14. There are 29. Okay, so half. All right, so we're going to watch this. It makes sense. <clears throat> Go on, put your hands down. I'm good now. Let me get the credit union. Now, again, you might not be in this market, okay, which is completely fine. The flow still works. So you can open the credit union script. You can follow the flow, or you can open up your script follow the flow and see what he's doing differently for the credit union market. What I'm trying to get to is <clears throat> I want you to see how somebody has been in the business, highly successful, how he interacts with people and things that he does. Okay. So let me play that for everybody. Uh, first of all, has everyone submitted the DRB report? Okay, let me try it differently. I always do this every single time. Ha Please raise your hand if you haven't submitted the DRB report. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Zach, if you can hear me, uh, you need the DRB report. So let me put it in the chat. And it's right there. Okay, there it is in the chat, if you can see it, Zach. Patricia O'Connor, good morning. What can I do for you? Patricia? Is this the one we're supposed to fill out? Good morning. Is this the one we're supposed to fill out every day that you're asking about yes. now? Yeah. Okay. Yes. No, I have not. Okay. Yeah. If you can go ahead and fill that out now, I'd appreciate it. That'd be great. Okay. Mm. Oh, 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 oh. Let's do this. Let's put this over here. We're going to give Erica that break I was talking about, but I have some questions. Okay. William, what's up? Um, we'll for the video that we're about to watch today, what um what package should I have open to follow along? If you want to follow with them, it would be the credit union script. <clears throat> but but even if you're not in that market, what I want you to watch is to see how he relates, how he flows. He's going to bring up uh, options. He's going to talk it through with the client. So I just want you to get a sense of actually seeing somebody do this from the client's perspective. Zach, if you have a question for me, can you put it in the chat? And then uh, where's my greeter? Greeter, are you here? Greeter? Is it greeter? Am I? Oh my gosh, I'm really bad with the name. Yeah, Gretter. Gretter, you told me yesterday that you saw his chat messages, but I wasn't able to, right? You remember that? Gretter? Gretter? Can you repeat that? Can you repeat that again? Yeah. Uh, I was just saying that sometimes Zach would put a message in the chat that I couldn't see. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay, so if that's the case, yes, can, you, can you put it in the chat for me so that I can see it? Because for some reason, his chat messages aren't coming through. Uh, right. I, we can, okay, I will. Okay, thank you. All right, do I have any other questions from anybody before I play this little video for everyone? Faisal, what can I do for you? Yeah, is it the credit union script? or Credit, credit union presentation. There's credit union internet phone script. Okay. 
Uh, phone script. Okay. I request no, not, not, not the phone script. So let me show you exactly what okay. we did. It's called credit union script. All right. I requested and, access. <clears throat> okay. And it would look like that. Well, that's the back end. That's the front end. His might be a little bit different because obviously this was recorded a long time ago and we've evolved since then, but uh, we'll get it figured out. Okay. So type Kira. Kira, share Faisal, share Faisal, share Faisal, share, thank like Kira, share. Okay. All right. That being said, let's go ahead and play the video for everybody. Patricia, did you have another question? Your hand is up. No. Okay. Audio on? Hi there. Hi, you can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me okay? I can. <laughs> oh, I can hear you really good. You're almost screaming at me. Oh, good. Good laptop. <laughs> All right, good. Well, hey, no, that must be Adam too, right? Yep. <laughs> a pleasure to meet you. Carney, I know I had a chance to speak with you, not you yet, madam. It's. I'm really glad we get to do the, for, uh, this for you virtually today. Um, yeah. Now, hey, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and dive straight in, okay? I know you probably got a busy day and I want to get on with the good stuff. So I'm going to share my screen real quick, okay? And let me know when you can see it. Perfect. You can see that okay? Uh, yes. May, maybe a little bit tough to read, but that's okay. I usually want to pull this out just to make sure I showed you a copy of the letter that was sent into you after your request was processed. And like it says in the letter, my job today is pretty simple. I'm here to go over your benefits and help you guys get enrolled. And when I'm finished, they'll have you fill out a quick report card for me. That goes directly back to American Income so they know that I did my job today. Does that sound fair? Yeah, totally. Well, Okay, good. Now I heard you're with Boeing Employees Credit Union, right? Yes. Good. Do you, do you get very involved with them at all or? Not really. I mean, they're a great credit union. I mean, we've never had any issues. <laughs> okay. I mean, they're pretty large now these days, right? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, because they're so large, a lot of people don't really realize this, but credit unions, they're actually not owned by shareholders. They're owned by the members, right? They're a member owned organization. So technically you guys are part owners. Did you know that? Good to know. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't know that, huh? You can Good start telling everyone you're part owners yeah. of ECU, okay? <laughs> but what that allows <laughs> you to do, that, al that allows them to provide you guys a lot more additional services and benefits for all the members. Now, um, Adam and Courtney, unfortunately, they don't know everyone's personal situation. But what they did find out is that everyone has very similar gaps in their personal benefits. And also, a lot of them needed help with estate planning, okay? So what they did is they set up a new financial information guide with the will kit, along with a permanent benefit program for the members of BECU. Now, there's going to be a few reasons why we're meeting today. There's a quick member survey that we're going to fill out for them today. So I'm going to pull that up first, okay? And then the second thing that's going to happen is I'm going to issue your no-cost benefit package that you filled out that online request for, right? Okay, lastly, yeah. Yeah, and lastly, we'll see if you can qualify for any of those permitted options I was telling you about, which they set up for all the credit union members. So starting with a quick survey, let me put your basic info in real quick. Courtney, I saw that it's with two E's, right? Yeah, it's technically Courtney. That's all right. My name spelled <laughs> kind of weird too. So, um, and then skip with two P's. I think I saw. Two P's. Yep. Sir. All right. And F, F at the end. Yeah. F at the end. And then what about you, Adam? Same last name. Yeah. S K I P P S. Mm-hmm. Can't can't miss the S. All right. There we go. So, um, again, you guys are with Boeing. And how long have you actually been with them? Oh gosh. Uh, I've been with them for probably. Years. Yeah, at least. Yeah, since we maybe a little before, so 12, 13. Wow. Well, then I got to ask, I Adam, are you working years. at Boeing right now? or No. No. <laughs> you, you don't work at Boeing? I'm curious then, how did you guys even join no. BECU? BECU is open to the public. Okay, so you guys just just walked away. I mean, thankfully, I know you guys are up in Everett. I'm actually right up the street in Mukateel, so not too far, actually. We could have Oh, yeah. 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 We've had Carlos there, and um, 
I think we just opened accounts when they it became available to the public. It used awesome, awesome. Well, but, hey, I'll tell you what. Uh, I definitely want to know all that, and I'll uh, gather all that information through these quick, uh, quick questions here. Okay. Now, this member survey just really helps uh, us learn about what services and products are currently being used by all the members, right? And wherever you need more help or more information, we'll push that information to BECU so they can help you a little bit better. So, starting with the top set, top segment here for online and account services, are you guys using their online banking portal right now? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. And what about their mobile app? Have you guys downloaded mm -hmm. that yes. before? All yep. right. Are you guys uh, getting all e-statements or are you still on paper? Yes. Yeah, all, all e-statements. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what about their um, really basic bank, bank features like bill pay, direct deposits, auto fund transfers? Yeah, I think most of our bills are on auto pay. <laughs> Good. Makes so it easy. Use them as like your main institution then. That's great. Oh yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Good. How about their branch services? Of course, they got a few branches in Everett since that's where they're from, right? We I live across the street from one. <laughs> awesome. Are you familiar with all their branch services at all? Like their money orders and notary services? Definitely gotten the money order there before. Um, not on a regular basis, so. <laughs> okay. No worries. So I'll just put uh use since uh, you're familiar with that. Now for deposit yeah. products, check-in and savings, since you use them as your primary bank, I'm sure you have both check-in and savings accounts, right? Yeah. Awesome. And then as far as uh, the higher interest savings accounts like CDs or money market accounts, is that uh, where you have those too? No, no CDs or money market accounts. All right. And what about your retirement accounts? Are those done through work or do you have one set up with them? I'm through work. Through work. That one's done through work, so you don't have that with BECU, right? Nope. Okay. Well, hey, for uh, the ones that you don't currently use, would you like more information on them at all, especially for the CD rates, money markets, right? And, of course, their retirement account. Um, The CD and money market, for sure. Um, The retirement, I mean, that's pretty set in stone, right? <laughs> yeah, I can get the, the, the other one through my work as well. Oh, no. Awesome. Okay. Well, hey, I'll at least have them give you some updated rates on that. Credit unions are typically pretty proud of what they can do as far as interest rates go. One of the bigger benefits with them, right? So yeah. uh, on the final stretch here for loan products, do you have a personal credit card with them right now? Yeah. Yeah. Good. And uh, do you do any of your home loans, lines of credit, or um, auto loans with them at all? Uh, we did an auto loan, uh, actually a couple, but they're all paid off. Awesome. Well, congratulations, man. That's good. <laughs> and then uh, what about the personal lines of credit? Have uh, have you ever used one of those with them at all? We did. I don't think so. We No? No. No? Do you yeah. guys need one? <laughs> <Would you like that? laughs> do, you guys, do you guys need more information on any of that at all? We, we don't need any lines of credit as of right now. But I'm surprised we haven't seen one. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll check I'll more check. information so they can at least get in touch with you and uh, at least get you some of their rates. Um, of course, you know, don't go borrowing money for nothing, but at a time of need, sometimes it's nice to know uh, what you can get from them, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, you know, before we get down to the final stretch, one thing I want to double check on is whether or not you guys are members of any unions or VSOs. Um, are you guys union members or either of you veterans at all? I'm in a union. Awesome. And what union is that for you, Adam? ATU, uh, Automated Transit Union. Awesome. Is that a 1187 probably, I think, in Washington? No, I think, I think it's 1756. 1756? Awesome, man. Well, that's great. I'm going to have to double check some stuff then because I'm not sure if I mentioned this over the phone with you, Courtney, but I'm the same rep that takes care of a lot of the union groups in the area. So even the cops, the firefighters, the teachers, we provide oh. all their permanent benefits as well. Yeah. yeah. So let me so at least go through this last stretch and see if any of this looks familiar, especially through Adam's uh, union there. Your AD&D certificate, did you ever get one of those through American Income Life as a union member? Do you recall? I don't know who it's through, but I do have AD&D. 
That's the accident, death, and dismemberment. That's all right. We'll make sure to get that issued to you today. And then uh, the financial information guide and the will kits, that's the one that was mentioned in the letter. Have you guys um, gotten that from AIL before? No. Okay. We'll get that issued. Now, I heard, um, Courtney, do you, do you have any kids? I think you do, right? Quite a load of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how, much, how much is the load? Three? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, okay. I thought I had you beat. I got three too, so we tied. Okay? <laughs> I'm not competing anymore, though. I'm done. done. So. I bet I beat you out. <laughs> I, I had <laughs> in 18 months. I don't suggest that. <laughs> oh man, okay. And then uh, uh, needs analysis survey. Uh, has anybody completed that with you through the union at all, Adam? Back then, or I don't think so. That's the one that sets up uh, all the gaps in your benefits and fills them, right? We'll make sure to conduct that today as well. And has anybody set up your final expense program that you're eligible for as a credit union member? No. All right. Well, hey, no worries. We'll get all that done today, okay? Uh, now, as far as uh, BECU goes, of course, we get to rate them today on this survey here. So scale of one to five, um, how would you rate your overall experience with BECU? Five stars. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, and then Courtney, what is the best contact phone number for them in case they need to get in touch with you? It's 425-647-3750. Great. And um, the email? Is my business email. It's the word sparkle. And our last name, Skips at gmail.com that's awesome yeah what kind of business is that um i own a small business i i'm a crafter <laughs> oh wow that's awesome maybe you can give my daughter some lessons you're so close <laughs> that's great okay well i'm gonna go on and complete step one for you guys easy peasy right uh we're gonna move on to step two right now and the first one that i'm gonna open up for you is actually the ad and d benefit um let me see here. Group AD and D benefit. There it is. So um, again, if you guys, uh, you you actually have an AD and D certificate through the credit union. Um, uh, I'm sorry, your union already. This is going to be the one that you get for this meeting today. And what this does is it covers you for $2,000 if you were to die in a bad accident or if you lose your limbs per se, dismemberment, right? The best part about this one is it's non-contributory, non-participating. <laughs> so it's actually fully paid off for you guys already. Isn't that great? Oh, cool. All right. Yeah. So all you would need to do for your certificate, Courtney, is um, put down uh, your beneficiary and sign it and send it off to Waco, Texas. And for you, Adam, you're going to do the same exact thing. In, about, in a couple of weeks or so, they'll mail you back the official policy so you can store it for your records. All right. Perfect. All right. Easy. Yeah. Now, the next one I'll explain is actually the AIL Plus card, right? Um, let me, let, you guys must have health insurance either through Adam's work or. Yes. Okay, well, I'm going to zoom in real quick because I do want to let you know that this card is not insurance. So don't go canceling your health insurance for this, right? <laughs> this is simply a discount card where members save anywhere from 10 to 85% off on healthcare products, and they just increase their network to thousands of providers nationwide, which is great. So how you sign up for this card is you're going to want to go to this website right here, mybenefits.ailife.com. And when you enter this access code, it'll allow you to get it at no cost, right? Um, they do have a mobile app, which is great. Membership portal provider search. So you can at least figure out where this card is accepted, right? But of course, when they send you the uh, physical card, just keep it in your wallet. You never know when it could be used alongside your health insurance. And uh, since you have kids, you know, I hear that uh, my, my kids are almost at braces age, right? For orthodontics and all the weird stuff, right? Uh, you get a lot better discounts on. So I'm glad we can get this into your pocket today as well. Yeah. Pretty nice benefit, right? right? Braces yeah. might be a thing for us, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I need a savings plan for that with three, right? So you know how that <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> now, this next one here is actually the uh, financial information guide. Uh, this one's actually really important. And there's been a lot of hype about this one because they just now included a will kit. Did, did either of you have a will set up at all? No. Oh. Not not yet, right? I got my grandpa set up. <laughs> I 
not yet. yet. <laughs> not yet. Okay. Well, hey, no worries. Uh, you know, no worries for now. In fact, uh, only one out of three people in North America has one filled out, but it's actually extremely important because when families are unprepared, I don't mean to scare you, but settling a state can take a really long time, about 16 months on average, and nearly half of all estates cost over $15,000 to settle, and that's usually because families are not prepared with their information, right? So having a financial information guide for the family will work alongside your will kit, and uh, when that day comes, your family will know exactly what to do. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to dive into it real quick, I'm at least going to go through exactly uh, some of the areas that it's going to be really important. As you can see, some of this is pre-filled for you already. We definitely want to get it started today. Now, Courtney, I have your first and last name, but what is your date of birth? August 19th, 1986. I'm sorry, August 19th? Yeah. 1986. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, we're the same age. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. And then Adam, I'll add you on this uh, guide as well. For you, Adam, what is uh, your date of birth? May 27, 1983. Oh, man, that's pretty close. Okay, good. So, um, of course, I'll let you guys fill out the rest of this information here. We at least want to get the basics in today. And again, nobody served in the military, right? No. All right. We don't have to worry about that section then. Now, persons to be notified, this part is actually extremely important. I'm not sure if you guys realize this, but millions of dollars of life insurance actually goes unclaimed every single year. Um, it's not because families don't want the money, of course. It's usually because, one, they don't know about the insurance, right? Or two, they don't know how to make a claim. Or lastly, you know, the worst reason is when the companies can't even find the beneficiaries, right? So what they're saying is you guys got to think of at least the top two people for the each of you in your family and a top two people outside of the family as well for the each of you that can be there for the family to help out when something happens to you. So Courtney, who's the first person that comes to not mind? Who would you want notified in emergency or even death? I mean, obviously this guy. <laughs> yeah, um, outside of Adam, of course. Yeah, I, I don't like super close family. So um like a close friend. Oh, you don't have any close family in the area? Are no. Your parents, are your parents still around or you have siblings in the area? Uh, nope, none of the above. <laughs> okay, well, hey, let's at least put uh, family friends then, right? Who would you uh, consider family in your friend network, I guess? Yeah. Who, who at the top person? Uh, First person would probably be my friend, um, probably my friend, Melissa. Okay. I think, I don't, I mean. Melissa? Yeah. What's Melissa's yep. last name? Oh, um, it's her. She, she just got married. Uh, it's S-L-U, S-S-A-R. All right. And that is, uh close buddy of yours yeah okay and then uh is she you said she's uh married right yeah she just got married to uh her husband chris okay same last name mm -hmm. awesome what is the best contact phone number for her for the notification list i, I assume 425 it is 425 yeah, <laughs> five nine five seven two seven eight. Okay, and who would be next for you? At least two from the each of you. Hmm. Um. Probably my other best friend, I guess. <laughs> okay, and who would that be? Her name's Danielle. Okay. Last name is uh, Jones. J-O-N-E-S. Okay. She's not married. And you said that's a BFF. <laughs> not married. Okay. And what's the best contact phone number for her? Yeah. 
Sorry mm -hmm. if I'm uh, repeating myself. I, it's a little bit it laggy. It is 360. Okay. Oh, you're fine. Yeah, same here. <laughs> um, so it's 360-248-3855. All right. Um, I'm sorry. I forgot to ask this. Melissa and Danielle, are you both in the Everett too? Or? Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, you said they're both best friends. Let's not make Melissa feel left out. Let's put that. <laughs> Good. Okay. Um, for you, Adam, hopefully that gave you some time to think about your top two. Who would those individuals be? Who's number one? My first one is Chris Gray, E-R-A-Y. Okay. And that is a friend or family? Yeah. Best friend. friend. <laughs> okay. I guess with three kids, that's the only family you guys really need. <laughs> Okay, yeah. and then uh, see who uh, is Chris married right now or no? Yeah. Okay, spouse's name? Jess, J E S S E. You said Jess? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. E um, and Jess's last name is Gray? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the best contact phone number for Chris? 425. Uh, 310. One four six two. One four six two. Okay. And then that is an effort as well? Yeah. Okay. All right. And then um who's next for you? Um I'm pretty close to my cousin, the Tabitha. Oh, there's family. That's good. Tabitha. <laughs> hmm. Raymond, P A T U R M A N. You said P A? P A Thurman. I'm sorry, that's a little bit hard to hear. Um, gosh, do you have like okay, do you mind repeating that? Sorry. Thurman. P A U R. -M -A -N. Oh Thurman. Thurman. Got it. Okay. Yeah, it's a it's an odd one. <laughs> that's all right. And you said that's a cousin. Okay. Cousin, yeah. and her husband's name is Greg. Red? Greg, R-E-G. B-R? G-R-E-G. -E oh, Greg. Oh, my Greg. God. <laughs> okay. Same and last then, name. Uh, same last name. And what's the best mm -hmm. contact phone number for Greg? Uh, 360... 653-9564. Okay. And is he in Everett? They are no. in Olympia. Yeah. Oh. All right. A little bit of a drive. Yes. Just don't go at like <laughs> 3 p.m., right? <laughs> mm -hmm. But okay, great. Hey, I'll let you guys, um, you know, fill out the emergency contacts part of it or the additional contacts, right? Since you have some friends out here, but I'm glad we're able to at least get that top part started. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, that's good. I'm glad you guys got some set up on your emergency contacts here. Now on this next part, uh, the next page is really for you to list out all your financial assets and liabilities, right? And the reason why that's important is so that your family knows exactly what accounts to close down. And for liabilities, of course, if there's any outstanding debt, they know exactly what they're inheriting as well, right? Um, now, on that next page, you're going to put down all your trust and will information. I know you guys don't have one set up yet, but uh, after today, you'll have no excuses because we're going to give you that will kit that allows you to do it at no cost. I don't know about you, but uh, that's the biggest reason why I didn't do one. Uh, to pay a couple grand or for something um, when I think I'm invincible still, it didn't make much sense to me, right? So thankfully, it's free now. And knowing that it takes so long sometimes for families to close everything out, Obviously, uh, this was a good avenue to get that set up finally. Um, now, your insurance policies, this is actually one of the most important parts because, again, money only goes unclaimed if families don't know about the policies, right? So the top one is for you to put down all your health and medical insurance you have through work. Now, Adam, is your health insurance through the ATU or? Through the, through the company. 
through the company. Okay, great. You're going to want to put that information here. And is your life insurance just through work or did you guys actually qualify for outside benefits as well? It's just through work. Okay. Well, for your work benefits, just check group insurance and just know that the termination date on that is of course, when you switch jobs, retire. Now, if you ever get qualified for any outside insurance, make sure you know what type of term you're qualifying for. Now, provided you do get qualified for any of the permanent benefits that the credit unions are are, um, allowing you to enroll into today, that's the only one they tell you to put in pen, because just like the cops, firefighters, and vets, those will never go away on the family, even after you're fully retired, okay? So the next uh, last page here, digital accounts, is really just so that your family has access to it and they can help get the word out if something were to happen. And lastly, funeral instructions. Now, that's not my favorite subject in the world, but have you guys put much thought into that at all, burial or cremation? Yeah. You have? Wow. You said (laughs) cremation, Adam? Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't know you you guys' reasons. A lot of times people select that uh, simply because of cost reasons. Either way you go, it's getting pretty expensive, right? Um, However, the members who got qualified for the permanent benefits, they actually have what's called the Freedom of Choice Certificate. And that actually allows your family to handle all final expenses um, for life. So they don't ever have to come out of pocket for it, okay? We'll take a look at that program later on and see if that's something you guys are eligible for, right? Anyway, yeah. you can see how this guide can be helpful for family to find, right? For sure. Okay. Well, good. Uh, you know, for the last will and testament kit, this is more so a booklet, right? A, a workbook, I guess, right? For you to be fully prepared and setting up your will. So I'm just going to skim through it real quick. I'll let you guys do the homework on it. The first spread here is really listing out all the involved parties, right? So of course, all your information and the kids as well. When you get into the next spread, you're going to want to start thinking about guardianship or maybe godparents, right? Who's going to be taking care of the kids if they're still young? Executor of your estate, a couple of backups if something were to happen to the both of you, since in Washington State, you're each other's primary executor. Um, And bequest is really all your final wishes, right? So you're going to want to think about all these sectors here. Make sure you read through it and put put your final wishes in each of those areas there. And the final step to this is just going to the same website all our veterans go to, americawills.com slash willkit. When you put in the promo code, they will validate your email membership. When they uh, actually complete with um, receiving all that information, they'll send you a printable version of that will that you can download, at which point you can go into BECU, get that thing notarized, and at least you'll have your first version of your will set up, which obviously can be updated later on, okay? Any questions about all that so far? I don't think so. It, I mean, it sounds no. pretty easy so far. <laughs> but it's it's a lot, but you're right. It is pretty simple, right? Now, since you guys have three kids, what's the age range, Courtney? How old are they? Six, six, and seven. Six, six, and are they twins? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Okay. Well, that's great. I could see why you guys ended after that one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, hey, I don't know if you guys remember yep. McGruff. Okay. <laughs> do, do you guys remember McGruff by chance? He was a yeah. staple of our childhood. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, there's kind of like an age minimum to remember McGruff, right? However, yeah. uh, they're still around. He's taking brights out of crime still, right? And they're endorsed <laughs> by the National Crime Prevention Council. And what this guide uh, includes is, of course, the... Um, fingerprinting. I don't know if you remember doing that as kids, right? The DNA collection, of course, some safety tips for the family. So when you thumb through this, right, the rest of the pages are tons of really good information about uh, just some parenting tips for you guys. Some has to do with bullying, stranger danger, uh, internet safety. So depending on how old your kids are, there's some helpful information, but the most important page is probably right here where you can actually do the fingerprinting, have an area to put the photo in at least School photos at minimum, right? But they say semi-annually. And of course, all the basic information authorities need to even issue that Amber Alert. Heaven forbid your kids ever go missing, okay? Now, since it's over, what, 2,300 kids per day now that gets reported missing, the authorities are asking for you guys' help since this needs to be in the hands of every single parent. Would you guys agree? Oh, yeah, Yeah. for sure. Right? 
So uh, what they're saying is if you know anyone else who can benefit from this, if there's other kids, your kids hang out with, right, that you feel this can be helpful for, they can get this out to them as at no cost as well. So is there anyone you can think of that actually has young children that can benefit from a McGruff kit? Um, my friend Melissa does. Yeah. Melissa? Okay. Yeah. What's Melissa's last name? Um, Flusser. S-L-U-S-S-A-R. Oh, that's the same one you mentioned earlier, right? Same one, yep. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Is there anyone? Our children are actually very close. That's great. Is there anyone else you guys can think of? What about for you, Adam? Is there anyone who can benefit from this at all? None of your friends had kids. Yeah, no, 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 you're you're like me, man. None of my none of my friends are are married or have kids either. But I got three. Okay, well, good. Hey. Anyone anyone else that comes to mind right now for you, Courtney? I'm. Oh gosh, I. So many people have kids, but oh, so many that, people I don't talk to. Have to have kids. Oh yeah, all of that information is already in. Mm -hmm. Okay, the people um, that you listed mainly. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, that close with the people who have kids. I hear. Yeah, I'm sure you get that. <laughs> no, that's okay. And you, uh, you already have a good list started already. Now I'm gonna make yeah. sure that I get all these um benefits out to you, right? And before we move on to the final step, I do want to make sure we go over the sponsorship program. Now, uh, because you're a member in good standing with the credit union, they're actually allowing you to extend the same no cost benefit package to the people in your life that'll help out when something happens to you, right? So they actually will get the same $2,000 AD&D benefit. They also get the AIL plus card for those health discounts, right? Um, they'll receive the same financial information guide and the will kit. So they don't have to pay a couple grand to get that set up too. And of course, for those with kids, let me know who they are so we can include those child safe kits. Okay. Um, however, there is a small catch. They can't just give them to anyone. They do have to qualify since they're not the ones who requested it. Right. And what they're saying is one, they got to be over 21. I'm sure everyone you listed is over 21, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> They got to be uh, either employed or retired. And lastly, they can't be in trouble with the law. Adam, that doesn't take out all your friends, right? No. no. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. Uh, so I'll tell you what, what we'll do is we'll, of course, take care of Melissa first. And she's the one that you says has, um, has, the, has kids, right? Yes. Okay. We'll obviously handle this for Danielle and also uh, Chris. And Tabitha. Now, is there anyone else that you can think of that can benefit from the two thousand dollar certificate at all? Uh, not. I mean, that's like the majority of our close friends. Mm -hmm. Okay. If well, we do think of anybody later on, is that something we could add? Uh, yes, absolutely. Okay. You of course have my number. Um, yeah. so you can definitely uh, let me know later on too. Okay. Now, uh, the last step is pretty. The last step is pretty important, though, because I'm, I don't know if they're members of BECU or not, but uh, the people you sponsored must be notified in order to receive the benefits. Now, you can let them know by giving them a call, but I'm sure everyone here knows how to text, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm going to send a text message that you could follow, uh, forward along to each person you extended these benefits to. But who do you think are like the top one or two people that can really use these benefits for you think out of these four? I mean, probably the two I listed. Which one? The two, the, the top two. The top two? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll put hearts on them. Okay. Okay. All right. Because what I'm going to do too, let me go on and pull this up, okay? Uh, because we're so busy with these requests, sometimes our biggest challenge is actually winning at phone tag, right? Or getting in touch with them. Not to mention, they don't even have my number, right, Courtney? So uh, what I'm going to do is at least send a group text to Melissa and Danielle. Not together, together with you, okay? So that way, one, they're already notified. And secondly, they have my number already. So if they have questions, they could bug me, not you. Is that good? <laughs> so give me a second here. I'm going to pull you back up. Yeah. Yeah. As I'm doing this, Courtney, do you know if either of them are members of BECU at all? Not off the top of my head, no. 
not something we talk about. <laughs> uh, Chris, Chris Wing is. You said Chris is? Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's four, two, five. And this is your cell number, right, Courtney? That's me. Okay. Got it. Okay, you got the group, the first group text, right? Yeah. That one was to Melissa. Now, I'm going to work on the second one, but as I'm doing that, can you go ahead and either hit a like button or reply thank you, actually? So that way they know I'm not a robot, okay? And that I actually know you, okay? <laughs> you know how it goes this way <laughs> right. these days with all the crazy robocalls. Yep. And then the other one is 360 There we go. Sorry, I'm not the fastest typer in the world, but give me a sec. Oh, you're oh. fine. <laughs> all right. And uh, I'll just send you like a default one for the other two, at least, um, that Adam can can forward out later too, okay? Perfect. Yeah, but yeah. sure. If you think of anybody else after this uh, call, you can definitely just, just let me know, okay? Okay. Sounds good. good. Now, um, they might call you or they might text you, like, what the heck is this, Hi. right? If we're <laughs> still on Zoom, go ahead and just answer the phone and I'll help you explain everything, okay? Oh, perfect. All right, good. So, hey, uh, now we're on to the final step. Uh, I'm going to open up that group letter again. Now, you, did you get the email with both the, both the letters by chance, Courtney? Both the letters. Um, hmm. Yeah, that I got that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the one that was sent to you. Um, I did get you know, that. Yes. Yeah, direct, directly. And I read after. through it. Good, good, good. Wow. That's better than most. A lot of people don't. So I was going to back up and at least fill you in a bit. Um, <laughs> yeah. And like the letter says, uh, you know, there's some permanent benefits that are set up, right, for all the credit union members. And they usually want me to fill you in before the next step. So I'll just kind of go through it quickly for you guys. Now, as the letter reads up here, it says, uh, dear members, the program's being offered to you that offered to you today are made available on a voluntary basis through the cooperation of credit union benefits a company dedicated to support the growth of credit union members in north america an american income life insurance company ail has a long-standing history of serving credit union members and their families so um you know prior to today a lot of people have not heard of american income life right and if you never filled out your response card adam you probably didn't hear of uh of us either through the union right have you ever filled out that response card through the union adam probably not uh, yeah you haven't right anything. Okay, well, no worries. Um, again, the reason why people haven't heard of them is because they are private. So unless you're a union member, no one has access to the benefits, right? Now, the reason why they chose American Income, though, is because even though we all have uh, benefits through work, 31 days after you leave your job, get laid off or retire, you lose all those insurance benefits, right? So provided you qualify, these benefits are a little bit different. They're permanent and they're portable, which means even after you retire or even get fired, right, you get to keep these ones for the rest of your life. That's pretty nice, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So I'm going to just go ahead and uh, skip on to the last uh, paragraph here. All it really states here is the fact that, uh, yeah, hey, these benefit, there are several benefits available. Please take a few minutes to listen to the rep who's visiting you. If they can help you with your needs in this area, please take advantage today. We would like your feedback. So take a minute to complete the report form. This info helps us serve you more effectively. So all they're saying is uh, whether or not you're able to qualify for the benefits, they just ask that you give them some feedback on the report form. So that way they can continue to improve the benefits for all the members. Does that sound fair? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So good. Um, let me go on to the needs analysis. This was the last two checkpoints on that list there, right? 
And uh, on this needs analysis, um, the first thing I'm going to go through is just some preliminary questions. Just because you're a credit union member, it's not like an automatic enrollment. Unfortunately, there is a qualification process. So if you're too high of a risk, they can't just let everyone in, right? So there's a couple of questions just to make sure. So for the both of you, are you guys taking any prescription medications right now? No. no. Okay. Daily vitamins. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Not considered prescriptions though, so we're safe. Uh, what about uh, any health issues in your lifetime? Any major health issues at all? No? Couple okay. stuck kids. Needed a C-section, but that's about it. <laughs> a couple stuck kids. Oh, man. Yeah, I, re I remember <laughs> that trauma. Any uh, uh, tobacco or marijuana use in any form? No. Nope. Nope. Okay. Um, any major arrests, including DUIs? Nope. No. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Nice that's and like, easy. <laughs> that's like a, that's like an A plus. That's great. Do you guys get checked <laughs> up? Uh, do you guys get checked up regularly at all, or? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Every year, he's required to from his job, and I'm just due because I'm a good patient, I guess. <laughs> Well, that's great. I got to tell you, it's pretty rare, especially in this country, to have no prescriptions at all. So good job on that. You guys are doing something right. Uh, <laughs> how, are, how are the kids, since they are included into the plan, is there anything going on with them health-wise? Health Nothing at all. The girls were full term, even for identical twins, and have not had a problem since day one. So really lucky right that's how i feel about my kids too yeah so, so good um now mm -hmm. i'll move on to the needs analysis and it is determined uh, your needs are based off of three things one the family situation two uh benefits you already have and lastly your income okay so uh let's go ahead and at least fill out this form here courtney you are so what are you like self-employed basically yes okay actually you know what this might give me some issues. We're going to switch you guys, okay? The yeah. The older one. Why are you so old, Adam? No, I'm, I'm teasing. Yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> so, 8, 27, 19, 3. And let's put you right here, Courtney. You are 8, 19? 19. Mm -hmm. Okay. There we go. All right, and then um, Adam, your job title? Uh, coach operator. I'm sorry? Okay. Coach operator, bus driver. Bus driver? <laughs> okay. That works. That I heard. Uh, and then Courtney, uh, should I put self-employed for you? Yeah. Okay. Adam, male. Courtney, female. Correct me if I'm wrong, okay? <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, and then... Uh, the the dependent children are 18, of course, many of them. Uh, life insurance through work. Adam, do you know what your coverage is that you have through um, the group benefit right now through work? Uh, it depends on how I die. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it usually does. I'm talking about the natural. It's up to 100,000. What was that? It's up to 100. Usually the $100,000 ones um, are either A, if you like up your coverage or the accidental coverage. Is that the accidental one or the standard one? I'm, I'm union uh, too, and my typical uh, union benefit is about 20K. So do you remember what yours is specifically or? Uh, it's 20,000 and then there's another one that's 100,000. So you, you're, you're pretty sure it's 100K? yeah okay courtney um do you have like a spouse coverage through that at all or are is it just adam <laughs> uh, your coverage is 10 oh <laughs> 10 000. Hey, i'm worth what, more than that what what he's saying is don't die <laughs> yeah uh, life insurance outside of work nothing set up yet right no no do you guys currently rent or own rent all right. And what do you, uh, what's your approximate monthly payment right now? Too much. <laughs> we pay about 2,400 a month. 2,400 a month. Okay. I agree with you though. It's crazy these days. 
Uh, we don't have to worry about that one. Have you guys uh, saved anything for college education yet? I know they're still kind of young, but. <laughs> not yet, no. Oh, yeah. Okay, and of course, not retired. There's a button yeah. that says, I wish. No, I'm kidding. Um, right? <laughs> um, good. And then uh, for working families, it looks like what they're going to do is set this up based off of the Hour Power program. Now, did they ever fill you in at all on the Hour Power philosophy through the unions at all, Adam? No. No? Okay. Well, I'll at least back up and fill you in on that. It's actually an age-old union principle that states that members should be taking their first one to two hours of their weekly work wage and setting that aside to protect their family's future, right? I don't know if you're anything like the families I meet with, but most of them admittedly waste half their money on things they don't ever need, right? Especially when we have kids. So any financial planner would actually um, tell you to set aside anywhere from 10 to 15% of your income, but that's a lot of money, right? Yeah. Yeah. So when your benefits are based off of one to two hours of your income, that's only one fortieth of your paycheck or better yet, 2.5%, right? So that way, all the members can actually afford the program. Now, um, Adam, how much are you making per hour right now? 35, 15. 35, 15, okay. And Courtney, you are not hourly, but what's your no. month? <laughs> oh, it varies between zero and thousands. <laughs> there's, no, there's no median. So we just don't even calculate mine when we pay our bills and whatnot would you say it's like uh well what would you say is like an average know. would probably be like 500 a month 500 just okay. to, to stay safe sure yeah no worries that's it's good all that's extra easy. so you kind of get to bring home the play money right exactly yeah. everything that's... i make goes towards vacation or sports or whatever okay i don't know why i put 500 it's hourly That'd be a really good <laughs> business. Um, I'll tell you what, for now, we'll uh, base this off of Adam's hour power, okay? And uh, the reason why they usually do just one hour is because that should Perfect. never change your lifestyle, right? I mean, think about if you guys may, uh, worked one hour more. Adam, Adam, do you ever work more than 40 hours a week? Oh, yeah. Regularly. <laughs> okay. Well, if you, I mean, what's your normal um, hours, I guess? Do you work like 50 hours, 60 hours? Uh, it varies, but I average about probably 48. A week or 48. Okay. Well, I'm glad it varies uh, because you'll definitely understand this. If you're averaging 48 hours, but next week you work 49, you're not taking that one hour and upgrading cars with it, right? Probably, probably not your dream one, at least, right? right? Mm -hmm. uh, and if you get sent home an hour early, no. you're not shutting off the heat, the light, canceling cable or anything like that. Uh, what I'm really trying to say is one hour will never change your lifestyle, right? Uh, however, it is important to set aside. So from this point forward, if you do qualify, the first hour of your weekly work wage will be set aside to protect your family's future. The rest of the 47 or 46, right? You can do whatever you want with that. Does that make sense? All right. I don't know if uh, you guys can hear me okay still, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's a okay. delay, but we can hear you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's okay. We're we're managing. Give me a second, okay? I'm going to see what they come up with for you guys. So this will just take me a quick minute. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you guys have any fun plans with the kids this weekend? or? Uh, my nephew's birthday party. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I don't know if you guys um thought about that Evergreen State Fair yet. That's what we plan on doing. Looks oh, like yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. So. Kids all got free tickets from their school, so we might have to think about that. <laughs> oh, really? Hey, our district didn't do that for us, so that's that's good for you. Well, I've got three extra if we don't use them. <laughs> oh, okay. Hey, send, you're not too far. Send them my way. <laughs> all right. Oh, wow. This is great. I love sitting with younger families. Um, they're putting a lot of benefits into this guy. So let me, uh, get, give me a second. I'm going to pull this up for you, okay? Being called young is yesterday. <laughs> That's rough. Yeah, I don't know if you guys ever come out to the Mukateo side, but um, they just had that Lighthouse Festival last weekend. So that oh, was cool too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, we go, we used to have Saturday that way, but they moved Arlington. We don't really have any reason up there anymore. <laughs> I hear you. Okay. Well, hey, I'll tell you what. Uh, let's go ahead and tie this all up, okay? Can you see a new screen? My, my face is still in the corner, right? Yep. yep. <laughs> Okay. Well, very good. Members usually make anywhere from 20 to up to $120 an hour. The average family, though, usually sets aside about 40 to 60 a week. Now, based off of your hour power and on just uh, Adam's income, okay, they're going to have me show you the $35 a week program. So what he makes per hour and what that'll do for you and your family. There's three main areas they're concerned with. The top here says hospital benefits for accidents, right? And then your freedom of choice. And lastly, your monthly income protection. So let me ask you, have either one of you thought about what you would do if either of you or the kids get injured in a serious accident by chance? Struggle. <laughs> Struggle. I mean, you got that right. I mean, low, out of pocket ex expense. Yeah, you got deductibles to eat up. I'm learning a lot about that, right? Yeah, and of course, uh, uh, let alone any kind of missed wages from work, right? So, of course, they've given a lot of thought and uh, they know you have health insurance. And Adam, you have uh, probably workers' comp, right? Usually there's some form of disability yeah. there. But again, what they're concerned with is lost wages or any other expenses that start adding up because no one's paying you to be at the hospital and, no, and not at work, right? Now, when it comes to the kids, uh, God forbid, if something happens to them, for sure you're leaving work, and especially if Courtney's in the hospital too, right? So um, what they actually do on the first level here is they will send your family, if anyone goes to the emergency room, $250 every single time you go in to get an injury looked at or taken care of, okay? And the only exception to that is they double it to $500 a day, and they'll pay that out every single day up to a full year. Now, that works out to be about $3,500 per week. When that money comes into the family, Will that help you guys out at all, you think? Oh, yeah. Wait, this is all for $35 a month? $35 is the weekly amount, right? Because you set aside one hour. $35 an hour. Oh, weekly. Right. Sorry. Sorry, weekly. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Weekly. Okay, that's still great. Absolutely. Yeah. No, no, that's a good question, though. Thank you, for, uh, <laughs> thank you for clarifying. <laughs> So yeah, so that uh, that's the daily hospital benefit, and they'll actually maximize the benefits to a thousand a day if you check into ICU, because typically that's a pretty serious deal, right? It's usually life or death. That's why they do it for two weeks, and after that, they'll still continue the five hundred a day. And the best part about these benefits here is it's unlimited, right? Uh, they'll actually still be there. I think I broke the meter last year and my ankle of how many times we claimed on it. I went, my kids went. I think all of them claimed on it last year, right? Uh, so anyway, that's going to be the first tier here. And the second one here uh, dives into a little bit to the death benefits. Now, let me ask you, have either of you ever actually had to plan a funeral before by chance? Unfortunately, we've planned a few funerals. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So you guys know exactly <laughs> the, the headache and uh, money, I guess, that goes into it, right? Uh, um, the, the reason why I asked, though, is uh, they're not concerned about if you die. It's, of course, it's a when thing, right? And when you die, your kids or each other has to go to the funeral home and face the director. And just as you experience, they all say the same thing, right? I'm sorry for your loss, but how do you want to pay for this today, right? They want all that money on the spot. So while families wait for estates to settle, your life insurance through ATU to come in, or anything else, who has to deal with that bill in the meantime, right? your kids do or each other so that's why they set up the freedom of choice now have you guys seen this certificate before mm -mm. No. this is the same one all the vets cops firefighters use right the ones who qualified their spouses or their kids can actually march down to any funeral home nationwide pick out the plan casket service whatever they want to get done and instead of coming up with cash they can give them this certificate and everything gets paid that day on the spot now, now, isn't that pretty nice to have that set up for everyone in the family? That would be nice to have had in the past. <laughs> exactly, right? So absolutely. Hey, at least you could do more for your kids. They'll be all set up, right? So uh, what they actually do is they set up for you, Adam, um, a $15,000 freedom of choice. And for you, Courtney, same thing. Now, there's $10,000 set up for your kids, and that's for each of them. So total, total will be about thirty grand. okay? 
Now, um, if you were to die during your working years, though, likely, how do you think that happens? How, how do we think what what if, happened if you guys are really like healthy the payout? i was gonna say you guys are really healthy oh. right so so nine out of ten times it's times. usually because of an accident right so i see what you mean <laughs> yeah yeah and you know you guys haven't set in, set aside too much for college education or anything of that nature yet so if something were to happen to either of you in a bad accident they'll actually increase the benefit to a quarter million dollars on top of the freedom of choice now that's for the each of you. So if let's say something happens to you both, there's a there's a half a million dollars set up for the kids, okay? Wow. Auto accidents, they do 300k on top and common carriers is about 450k on top of everything else. Um that's like a plane, train, ferry, bus or taxi. And of course, if anything happens to the kids on any of these levels, there's 10, 20 or 50k there as well. So if it happens on the bus, even if you're driving, even if I'm driving the bus, <laughs> Um, you're supposed to, be, the, the, the actual, uh, definition is a passenger, uh, you have to pay a passenger fare. So unfortunately, I don't think you're paying fares to get on your own bus. Okay. okay. Uh, but yeah, so unfortunately, <laughs> probably not that. He is now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but it, but it would still be an accident though. So hopefully quarter million dollars yeah. will still be okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, I suppose. No. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, the final one here is the monthly income. Um, you know, let's say you did get home or, you know, you, you died in a bad car wreck or even a heart attack or stroke. Adam, how long will your checks continue to come into the family for, you think? Uh, from two weeks after my last day at work. Yeah, I mean, I'm <laughs> sure all. you seem really likable, Adam, but I'm <laughs> sure they're not going to keep paying your family if you're no longer clocking in, right? Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> no, so unfortunately the paycheck stops, but unfortunately the bills don't. Those will still continue to come in month after month. So the monthly income protects exactly that. So uh, God forbid something were to happen to you, Adam, um, you know, they're going to send Courtney a check of $5,343 the very next month after you pass, okay? And you see where it says one out of 12? That's because over the next year, while your family's waiting for all that life insurance stuff to settle, right? They'll keep sending her your paycheck as if you were still here and clocking in. Isn't that pretty cool? Um, and vice versa for you, Courtney. I mean, I don't know. Adam might need some help with the kids, especially at their age. I certainly do. So at least he can get um, a babysitter for that. Oh, actually, that's supposed to be a thousand a month. We'll have to help you get that adjusted, okay? So, <laughs> um, at least we're going to have um, some monthly income protection there for the both of you, all right? And I'm sure you're starting to see why they set all this up for all the members, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. So, um, you know, to jump into some of the protections and riders real quick, one of the first things that um, I do want to make sure we bring up with the protection is the fact that uh, it has a built-in cash value and paid up benefits. Now, cash value kind of serves as like an emergency fund. So let's say a few years later, things got tight financially, you'll have money built up in your program to help pay for uh, your hour power, or you can even take the money out for an emergency. The next one is a paid up benefit, which just means that when you're fully retired, right, you can stop setting aside your weekly wage for your family and you keep a reduced paid up final expense for the rest of your life. So let's say you're done paying and uh, 10, 20 years later, you pass away, your family will still be able to use that certificate. Isn't that pretty cool? Yeah. 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 And terminal illness rider um, just states that if you're terminally ill and not expected to live more than um, 12 months, they're going to send you half of that final expense to you. Now, strike and layoff waivers actually will apply to you, Adam, because you are a you union are. worker. And all that really means is that uh, if you ever go on a sanctioned union strike, they'll pay for all your insurance benefits for up to a full year. So that hour power that you're setting aside, American Income Life is just going to pay that for you. None of that has to be paid back. And for layoffs, they'll do it up to three months a year, okay? Which is really helpful when people aren't pulling in any money, right? Um, and lastly, these benefits are guaranteed. So all that really means is no job place, workplace, employer, no one can ever take this away from you. Even if your health changes, your job changes, it's permanently in your control forever. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. Was I pretty clear on all this? Do you have any questions about any of it so far? Super clear. I mean, 
I don't think I've ever had it put so clearly. <laughs> that okay. it made sense. <laughs> Well, that's good. That's good. Well, hey, like I said, you know, uh, my job was to go over your benefits and help you guys enroll in what you can qualify for. And the best part is they do set these up like a payroll deduction, but they do it once a month through your own account. So that way, if you do change jobs, retire, right? Uh, you never have to lose these benefits because it's permanently in your control and not your employers or even the credit union. That's pretty nice, right? Yeah. 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 So, so unfortunately, let's face it, we're all going to pass someday. We don't really have a choice in the matter, right? So it's either you guys think about this now or someone in your family, likely your kids, they're going to have to deal with what you dealt with, Courtney, uh, at the funeral home. And nobody wants that for their family, right? So probably the most important question is when something happens, you guys already see it right here. Uh, let's say in a bad car wreck or anything like that, there's going to be over half a million. So about $630,000 plus a full year of your paycheck, who would you guys want that money to go to? I mean, us. <laughs> <laughs> if something were to happen to you both. To both of us. Oh, gosh, I guess that would. Oh, I don't know. We haven't talked that through yet. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm I'm guessing for sure if the kids were of age, it'll be the kids, right? Yeah. 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 If the kids are of age, it would definitely be our son because he's mm -hmm. the oldest. Okay. So let me um actually can it be divided it. three ways. Yeah, yeah. We can. you got you guys can do it however you want. You can do oh. it four ways and add me if you want to, but oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm totally joking. Okay. So uh I fixed um I wanted to at least fix the paycheck here so it at least correlates for that. Okay. But uh so you said likely all the kids. Yeah. All three kids. Okay. So good. Now, um, again, it doesn't really make a difference to me or the company which program you try, try to qualify for. Now, most families will try to qualify for the basic program, setting aside that first hour of the weekly work wage, right? But a lot of families actually ask to upgrade the benefits. Like I said, you can do either one or two hours, right? Now that basically will double up your monthly income. It'll double up the freedom of choice, right? And what some members do, if they feel that this is good for now, they'll just set this one up and upgrade later down the road. What do you think makes the most sense for you and Adam? Which way do you guys want to go? I was actually going to ask you that later down the road. So good job. <laughs> um, probably just the initial one hour makes sense for us the most right now. The initial one hour. Okay. Well, hey, I'll tell you what, I'm going to move on to the the expanded medical questions, I guess, right? I'll run through those real quick, just to make sure there's no surprises. And if you guys can both still qualify for the program, we'll help you get enrolled as of today. Okay. Got you on. Hi there. Hi, you can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. Good, good stuff. Hold on. Let's get my video turned on. There we go. Good stuff. All right. So now we watch Johnny Ning go through the entire presentation. Interesting. There's some things that <clears throat> I saw that I would say, hmm, I don't know if I'd actually do it that way, but that's okay. We're going to discover it together. So let's see. Miguel Soto, what was your top takeaway from that discussion? Well, first of all, I noticed he was wearing his ID badge, so that was good. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, I, I I like how he connected with them. Um, I I thought he did a good job in um, being a little humorous with them, making them feel comfortable at ease. And I think mm -hmm. it made I think it made it flow throughout the whole process. Okay, awesome. Faisal, what was your top takeaway? Um, well, I, he was professional um, and how he was speaking. I found uh, he didn't necessarily follow the script as uh, for, for word, wording, but um, he was humorous and he was just engaging uh, with the client clearly. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, he, he did follow the script, but it wasn't like perfectly word for word. Uh, he seemed to know his stuff. Um, yeah. Occasionally, I was just kind of watching his eyes to see if he was focused on a script on his screen while he was talking to the client, but uh, could have been a bit of both, but 
he seemed very professional and, and really knows what he's doing. <clears throat> okay, awesome. What about you, Jenny Moss? It's always fun to watch somebody else present. And I'd actually seen this several times and every time I watch it, I get something new. So yeah, the conversational approach. Um, and then when something like kind of went wonky on him, um, no family, while well, he's like, okay, who's your main, you know, doesn't let things like that stop him. But um, right. he kind of matched their tone and their, you know what I mean? He um, probably doesn't talk that way to everybody. You know, so we kind of match the tone and the um, disposition of the people you're talking to. So he did a really good job with that. Yeah, they call that mirroring, right? When you right. mirror who you're speaking with and then you weave with them. Patricia O'Connor, what was your top takeaway? Uh, I thought there was a lot of continuity with him and the his, his clients. Um, mm -hmm how they interacted was very smooth and it seemed like it was um, low pressure. Um, he was uh, educated them on every aspect and they re it seemed like they received it well. Um, I thought it was a great presentation. Very good okay. presentation. All right, uh, Erica Price, what was your top takeaway? Um, I guess that it didn't feel salesy like at all. I didn't feel like he was selling anything, but he managed to sell them, you know? So I feel like it was, um, that was my takeaway is that I just didn't feel like it was a sales pitch at all. Okay. Not a sales pitch. That's good, right? <laughs> Rebecca Browning, what's your takeaway? My takeaway from it is kind of like what everybody else has said, you know, it was very professional, but yet smooth. He was very conversational. And it didn't feel like he was pressuring them to make a decision. And he educated them on every aspect of the presentation without seeming, for lack of a better word, robotic, if you will. Robotic. Okay. That's <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me. So, uh, Terry Holscher, what was the difference between what Johnny did versus what this, what I showed you yesterday? What you showed me yesterday? Well, what I showed all of you in class yesterday. I don't, I don't know what we're referring to. Sorry. <laughs> so yesterday we went through HP Pro setting up the plans, right? Uh huh. What did he do differently when he showed his plan to the client? Oh well, it didn't bring it all up at once. He was able to have it you know with a cursor or something to be able to break it down line by line as he was talking about it mm -hmm. that's correct so there is a spot on your uh we'll see it today in hp pro where you display the plan and then it goes line by line so this way you only have their focus on the area that you want them to see so you don't show everything all at once uh sarah you had raised your hand i was gonna say that he only put up one plan the recommended plan and mm -hmm. he verbally explained the enhanced plan to the couple rather than have the numbers up for both of them yeah exactly he only showed the one plan at a lower dollar amount based on uh, predicated on one hour right and in the credit union if somebody's working then we use our power whereas uh if they're not working or for the veteran market then we use the dollar a day function Right. Dre, your hand is up. What can I do for you? So he made them say yes a lot, like phrases like, does that sound fair? Does that make sense? They kept shaking their head and say yes the entire time, which was obviously when it comes to like a final decision, they're just been shaking their head yes the entire time. It's probably going to leave that way when it comes to actually closing as well. Yeah, statistics tell us that if you do that in a engagement and you shake your head or you ask questions where you know the answer is yes, by the time you get to the closing question, they're more likely to say yes than if you didn't do that. So it's just, again, one of those natural human tendencies we get them to do. Interesting, there was a challenge there from a technology standpoint. There was a lag, right? He persevered through the lag. And I think there were some times where the clients didn't understand what he was asking, right? 
So you're going to have that a lot with your own clients. <clears throat> we have to be patient and we just have to walk or rather work through the issues. Yes, Steve, what can I do for you? Yeah, I was going to mention that um, if you had chose me, but uh, <laughs> that the, you know, it was a, a really staticky on their end. And I noticed he never mentioned it. He never, you know, because it could have been something they could have used to be like, oh, well, let me get off the phone or something or off the call and call back. So he kept it going. And, and I guess, like you said, persevered through the the static. So I yeah, noticed absolutely. That. You, you don't let little things distract you or get it done. If they can get what you're saying, then you can just keep going. Yeah. Right, right. Faisal. Yeah, uh, just how long does it take from start to finish um, to finish it and, and to close? Like generally, um, how long? Well, <clears throat> when you're a new agent, you're starting off, it could take a while. I would say that once you're experienced navigating through HP Pro and you're moving through things, you can be anywhere from an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. Okay. Uh, and, then, and then it really depends on how quickly you want to work through your presentations. So the goal is to get to four presentations a day. Top performers are probably doing six to eight a day. But keep in mind, it's a balancing act, right? So <clears throat> you're making phone calls originally to set appointments and then you have appointments. So when you have more and more appointments, the amount of time you have available for phone calls starts to fluctuate. Problem is you still need the phone calls to drive the appointments. So the phone calls are considered activity you're going to have to figure out what makes sense for you. <clears throat> and then at some point, you'll probably reach a scenario where you're having so many appointments every day that you can't make enough phone calls to drive those appointments. So then you need help. So you can work with your uplines to figure out how to how you handle that. You're nowhere near ready for that. But when you are, myself or your upline, we can certainly provide resources for you to accomplish that. Erica, are you here, Erica? Are you ready to teach us... I'm HP Pro. I think so. <laughs> uh, I, think, I think and I, I hope I'm not a strategy, Erica. But I know I am. So this was my question though, because I'm sitting uh -huh. here getting like I'm sweating a little bit and I'm just thinking like, am I am not doing this entire presentation though right now? We're just focused on using other, using the drop down, putting in our code, you know, yeah, generating so just, the plans. All I want you to do is generate the plans for us. That's it. Okay. I'm going to walk through the script just like you saw Johnny do and show you a few things. But you're going to show us how to build a plan real quickly. And uh, Rebecca is going to tell you. Rebecca, were you here yesterday? You were, right? Okay. Rebecca is going to tell us if you do anything wrong. Okay. Is hey, that fair? That's fair. All right, so you can go ahead and so, share your screen. Okay, so okay. here's, yeah, yes. I, I'm going to share it all so that you can see what I'm doing because I might need a tip from you. But then if I hover over just my HP Pro, it should only show that. Correct? Okay, well, let's just see what happens. Let's just do that. There you go. <clears throat> okay, so you can <clears throat> see everything that I'm doing, right? Oh, no. Well, I can see your script. I don't need to see your script because you're not going to follow the script right now. All we're doing is you're going to show us how to do the two plans. That's it. That's all you're going to do. Okay. Okay. So go. So, so hang on. Do... I'm going to stop my share and I'm going to do something different. <laughs> okay. That's fair. <clears throat> So while she's trying to figure that out, the reason we show two plans as opposed to what Johnny did with just the one is simply because if you give an option to somebody, they're more likely to choose one of the options as opposed to a flat yes or no, right? So Johnny was confident enough with that particular client base that he was just going for yes or no and he got a yes. We don't have that level of confidence yet. And more importantly, People will make a decision based on what they're seeing. So if you show them something that is bigger or more or more enhanced than what is recommended, it gives them the thought process that recommended may actually be the better play, if that, if that makes sense. So think of it this way. 
<clears throat> you, have, you have something in the middle. If you have something at the top pushing down, then people will think the middle may have more value because they can afford it as opposed to the top. It's the same thing that happens to you when you go to buy a new car and you walk into a showroom. <clears throat> they don't put the lower cost cars in the showroom, do they? No. They put the higher cost cars. So we'll talk about that more in a minute. Okay, so Erica, what I want you to do in the lower left-hand corner, I want you to click on pre-plan. <clears throat> and Rebecca is going to give you the information to fill out. And let's see how you do. Okay. Um, just use my name, Rebecca. <laughs> okay, perfect. Did I spell that right? Yes. How old are you, Rebecca? I am 29. 29. You're young. Okay. And does this $25 an hour work? Mm -hmm. Are we doing this hourly? Yes. Are we doing hourly? Yes. Then, yeah, 25 who is your Who is your spouse, Rebecca? Nathan. Nathan. How old is Nathan? He is 39. Okay. Um, all right, is he a tobacco user? We both are. We vape. You vape. Okay, mm -hmm. go for it. Do you have any children under 18? We have three. Okay. Um, do we, is she supposed to tell me what to do? No, you, you're just going to build the two plans and she's going to let you know if you make a mistake. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> I feel like I'm already making a mistake. Am I in the right spot here? Looks good to me. Oh my goodness, Erica. Come on. You what? Can... Am I bad? <clears throat> no, I'm laughing because you you, you got to be confident. Okay. I'm confident. You're building the plan. I'm building this plan. And we're going to go to Triple Family. Mm-hmm. Plan options. One is going to be our recommended plan. And um, I might, can I do this right now? I just need to make sure that when I show it, it, the right one is hovered over, correct? Correct. Okay, so this is the $5 um, one. Do you suggest I do the second? change the name and then just go back through to allocate the first. You can do it either way. It's totally fine. Just go ahead and make that enhanced. Okay. Enhanced. <clears throat> okay, now you need to do this and then I'm, oh. That's fine, go ahead. Okay, and I'm gonna allocate remaining. Mm -hmm. Both, allocate and finish. So I have my plan here. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. I'm going to go over here and we're going to do it at $9 a day. Okay, you had me really nervous because I thought you were having me do the whole thing and I was trying to find a spot in the script. I was sweating, Sam. <laughs> Don't it's sweat, you got spike. this. It's a fear spike and you're doing just fine. I like hate books. Okay, so now I've got my first plan. Um, do I want to yeah, click on that? The benefit, no. Benefit okay. summary. Yep. Yeah. Remember, this is pre plans. You're not actually, you're practicing. Okay. And what okay. happened? Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're, now you're going too fast. What happened? Look at, uh, close that. Click anywhere else. Now show the recommended plan says 266. So what happened? What uh, should it be? Oh, 304. Right, so go back. Okay. So it changed. Oh, no, that. back here? Yep, plan generator. Just, should I just reallocate? Yes. Okay, do it again? Yes. Okay. It's right here. Okay, now display. There you go. And then we go here? <clears throat> Well, right. when you're running the script to talk about that. Right now, we're just making sure that we can build the two plans. So that's fine. You did the recommended and the enhanced. So that's great. <clears throat> okay, you can stop sharing. Okay. Thank you very much, Erica, for showing us how to do that. That's great. Now, for the rest of you, 
Does anybody, except for Holden, who wasn't here, does anybody have an issue with how to create those two plans? Miguel, your hand is up. How can I help you? I was going to say on her enhanced plan, she didn't change the option from triple family to quintuple. That's correct. So she had the pricing right, but she won't have the $500 a day, nor will she have the uploaded version, right? Or uploaded, the right. upgraded version of the accidental death and dismemberment. So Erica, can you share your screen again? Erica, are you there? Thank you, Miguel. You took the words out of my yes, mouth. I'm here. I'm here. Can you share your screen again? Yes. Okay. So, so what they're what they're referring to is I know where uh, it is. What, what, what the, <laughs> work with me here. Can you go back to where you were? No, no, just go. No, no, don't make the change yet. Please go back to, uh, yes, benefit summary. When we look at this one here, you'll notice everybody <clears throat> that it says 30, 60, 90 for accident, auto accident, common carrier. So what ends up happening is the big red number on the left, the 552 is the sum of the 285, the 146, the 60, and the 60. We know that that should be significantly higher instead of 552. So now go ahead and fix it, Erica. Okay. So we know it was at 552, and now we're going to make it at. Is that okay? Quintuple. Go to the highest one available. Okay. Allocate the remaining. You know, you need to allocate. You haven't allocated yet. Sorry. No, it's okay. We want the pricing to remain the same. <clears throat> And now we're at 100,000, almost uh, 80,000 more, right? <clears throat> so that's what happens if we forget to do that, then the value proposition to the client is not going to be as significant. That's important here, but it's also important if we have to down close, we still need to show value. Uh, you can go ahead and stop sharing now. Yes, Rebecca. I was just going to ask, does that change based on like location i think someone may have asked that but it cut out on my audio yesterday i try to rewatch the video does and it didn't ever get the answer does what change the benefit or the pricing or well theoretically the pricing doesn't change however based on whatever state you're in we may not be able to offer as much or there may be a limit as an example florida has sextuple you can go to six times the base on the uh, a71 product whereas most of the other states the the highest you can go is quintuple that's what so that's that why, was okay yeah yes. that's why this state is very important to put in there so you know exactly where you need to go all right so by show of hands do i have anybody who doesn't feel comfortable creating that plan barbie dolliver are you comfortable Barbie, I, I can't hear you, so I have no idea what you're saying. Yes, I'm comfortable. Okay, great. Uh, is anybody else not comfortable? Because <clears throat> I can go through with you. All right, everyone's good? All right, I love it. That's great. So what I want to do now, <clears throat> I can do one of two things. I can either go through the script with you, or I can talk about our products. It's up to you. I can go either way. <laughs> I can do either one. So I'm going to give it to Jenny Moss to make the decision for us. Jenny, do you want me to go through the script or do you want me to talk about our products? Which scripts? All of them? Uh, no, what I would do is go through, <clears throat> uh, probably go through the veteran script first and then anybody else that has like the Canadians, I will take them offline and do their script specifically. They just have more that they have to go through. Now you sit on the break, you're going to try to, because everyone's having the same issue I am or I can't. Uh, I have no access to. Oh, I think I fixed that. I just sent an email to everybody with the link to okay. the Google Drive. So if you can try to do that now, you should be able to access all. Yeah, that I can see. So if you can go through the products first, I would think, and then we can all yeah. check and get our scripts. No problem. So the products, I'll go through that and then we'll take a break and then we'll come back and we'll go through scripts. Perfect. <clears throat> so let me share my screen. Do this, bring it over here. Let's go through products. Yeah, so if you guys can, or all of you can try to uh, 
access that link, hopefully you can all get to all of the attachments. All right, so let's go to products. Here we go. All right, we're going to share this. And all right, from a product perspective, let me make this a little bigger for everybody. Can I do that? All right, so there we go. We can now see it. So the first product we have is something that's called Whole Life. It is the product that supports the idea of <clears throat> the uh, freedom of choice. Okay, so for every whole life product that we offer, you automatically get a certificate for the freedom of choice, which is what you would use to pay for the funeral and final expenses. The way that it works is you actually take that certificate to the funeral home, you sit down with the funeral director or whomever, and you let them know that, hey, the loved one had the freedom of choice, and I'm here to figure out how much it's going to cost for you to do your services. The funeral home <clears throat> then negotiates with you. The key word is negotiate because you just don't want to tell them, hey, I've got $50,000 because then the funeral home may charge you more than you want. So you negotiate <clears throat> whatever that money is. And then on the back of that certificate, the beneficiary assigns the benefit to the funeral director. Okay, whatever money's left over is going to be paid to the beneficiary after the fact. Now, we say that we can get this done within 24 to 48 hours where we'll actually pay out the funeral director. Jenny, how is that possible? How are we able to do that within 24 to 48 hours? Good question. It's a miracle. <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> that, I mean, that's out, 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 it's outstanding that they do that. I mean, do you I know how they're able to do it. No, I don't. Okay, so let me walk everyone through it. It's a little business course here. So basically, whenever you have insurance and you're a beneficiary, the insurance company is going to ensure that the person you're making the claim on has actually passed away. <clears throat> and then they're going to determine by which method or not method, but which uh, cause of death, accidental, natural causes, whatever the case may be. And then they're going to send you a document to sign. Has anybody ever had to manage a funeral? few people. All right, Terry. Go, uh, yeah, Terry, we'll go with you. So you had to manage a funeral. So uh, one, I'm sorry for your loss. Uh, two, when you had to deal with the insurance company, what did you have to sign to get the money? You probably should call on somebody else because this was a learning curve for our family. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yep. So it ended up being... Um, there was a policy that Hardy had been distributed through some kind of retirement plan. And when my mom died, it ended the plan. Uh, and so that had already been allocated. And then we just had to pay the rest of it out of pocket. Okay. I mean, that's good to know, even though you, I mean, everybody goes to this learning curve because a lot of people remarkably don't understand how insurance actually works mm -hmm. or what even is in place for their parents or loved ones. Uh, Steve, you said that you had to, manage a funeral in the past. What did you have to sign in order to have the insurance company pay you? Yeah. Well, it, it was me and my brother's, my, um, my brother's late wife. And he kind of, me and we used to live together and mm -hmm. he had to sign um, the the death certificate or whatever. Is that, or are you talking well, about? The death certificate is usually signed by um, the ME or the attending physician indicating that the person is actually deceased. So right. I'm looking for something a little bit different. Is it, did it work? First of all, Steve, so it was your brother's wife. Has anybody else here had a loved one where you personally had to get paid out by the insurance company? No. That was no. Erica, your hand is raised. Is that a yes? It's not a yes, but is it... <laughs> I was going to answer the question. Isn't it that, that they're only going to allocate the benefits... The specific benefits so that you can't come back and ask for other benefits? <clears throat> so, yeah, you're pretty close. What happens with an insurance company, even ours, doesn't matter. We're going to <clears throat> pay you the money. Let's say, let's say I'm the benefit. No, let's say my son's the beneficiary. I die. Okay. My son makes the claim and the insurance agent say, hey, no problem, Taylor. We're going to go ahead and pay you out. Here's the form you need to sign. One of those forms that he has to sign is going to be an indemnification clause. And to Erica's point, what that clause is, it's going to say, hey, <clears throat> by you accepting whatever money we're about to pay you, 
you can't come back and make additional claims. Okay? Because the insurance company doesn't want to take on the risk of having to pay out yet again and again to people. This is why when folks die in accidents, it sometimes gets a little tricky because the insurance company, when there's an accident, just like ours, will pay out more money if you have that as part of your portfolio. But because the risk is higher for us to pay out that more money, we want to make sure that the accident was actually the cause of death. So now understanding that the insurance company requires you to say, I'm not going to accept any more money, I'm not going to claim any more money. How in the world can we get money paid out in 24 to 48 hours? I mean, I've heard of insurance companies trying not to pay ever, <laughs> right? When homes get damaged in Florida or the you know New Orleans with that thing, I mean, that happens. So here's what actually happens with us. If you notice the certificate, the Freedom of Choice certificate, the language is we assign, right? So we're the beneficiary. We assign funds to the funeral home. So what happens with American Income Life, we get that form that comes in. We don't have any risk because it's a whole life policy. We're going to pay it out no matter how the person died, no matter when they died. As long as the policy is forced, we're going to pay it out. We've already assumed that risk. The moment that the freedom of choice is assigned to the funeral home, the payout is not now from the insurance company to my son in this case. The money is actually going from American Income Life to the funeral home. It is now a business-to-business -business expense. The funeral home has no vested interest to ask for more money beyond that which we sent them. So that being the case, we can pay that out very, very fast. Because if we have any issues, it's a business to business thing. I can call the funeral home and say, hey, X, Y, and Z, and the funeral home has to claim it as uh, income. I mean, it's a whole thing. Okay. If I paid that money out to Taylor, or if the church company paid it out to my son, he can only accept the money after he signs the identification clause. That takes time, particularly if the cause of death is something that's in dispute. Yeah. So we, years ago, and I'm talking a long time ago, the union bosses got together with American Life and said, hey, <clears throat> we've got an issue. Our people, our union members have insurance, but when they died, we saw families, widows, this is going way back, right? So typically as widows, having to do car washes, bake sales, raise money of some kind to pay for the funeral, even though they, uh, the union member had insurance. So that's at odds, right? Because now the widows are saying, hey, what's going on? I'm not getting my money in time. I'm having to do X, Y, and Z. Who are they going to beat up? The insurance company? No, they're going to beat up the union that worked with the insurance company to provide the services to begin with. So union bosses are like, yeah, we know that's not a good look for us, et cetera, et cetera. So they negotiated with us, and that's where the freedom of choice concept came up, right? We want to get that money out quickly, but we also don't want to increase our risk by giving the money out to Taylor immediately, and then Taylor coming back and say, hey, you paid me $25,000. I think I should have got seventy five. dollars Now the company potentially has to defend itself against a further claim. So to obviate that, got to sign that identification. You don't need to do that in a business-to-business -business play. That's why the freedom of choice moves so quickly. And we're one of the few people that do it. I mean, I've heard of one other company that actually does it. They do it a little bit different. But for us, that's how it works. And that's how we're able to get it out quickly, okay? So again, a little history about us and whatnot. Uh, Jenny, does that align with what you know? Or is this new information for you? No, I just didn't know. I thought it was 72 hours. So that's what the... Well, we say 24 to 48, 72. It's, it, the whole idea there is it's very, very fast. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. Sounds good. <clears throat> okay. So that's the whole life. There's different bands. There's four bands of whole life. So think of whole life as, hey, no matter how you die, no matter when you die, this policy is going to get paid out. In the beginning, we just had that. Didn't matter how much you bought, we would put you in the whole life. And then we realized that the more that you purchase, the higher the risk which means underwriting needed to do more things in order to um, mitigate the risk as much as possible. So American Income Life created four different bands. You have your base band, which is whole life. Then you have your preferred life, executive life, and then select life. 
when you are in HP Pro and you put in these numbers, you might see a parenthesis under the whole life and it says EX or SL or PL. That's what it's telling you is that that particular amount that you're going to allocate for that uh, person is at a different band than just standard whole life. Why does that matter to you is because <clears throat> the commission rates are different on the various bands. The higher up you go, so remember, whole life, then preferred, then executive, then uh, select life. As you go up in those bands, your commission rate slightly decreases because they have to take some additional money in order to mitigate uh, the risk. So that's why they do that. And I would tell you that no matter what band that you're going to sell in, you're fine. You're still going to make really good money because the numbers are bigger. It's just from a monetary standpoint or um, the commission rate standpoint, they just lower it just a tad in each one of the bands. The issue age is from zero to 80. If you are 60 or older, then you get what's called a senior graded whole life policy, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Whole life policies in general, they build cash value after three years. So in the first three years, there's no cash value that's generated. It starts to accumulate after three years. Does anybody know why we wait three years before we start doing cash value? Yes, Rebecca, what do you think? So they can, uh, so the client can be paying their premiums into it to start accumulating? Sure, they have to start paying money because if we did it immediately, there wouldn't be as much money in there to for us to take and invest to create a return to give you cash value. So that's exactly right. After three years, we've now accumulated enough, um, theoretically, enough premiums that we can start that process. Uh, let's see, paid up value <clears throat> is also available with whole life policies. And what paid up value means is that if you decide at some point you own a policy with us, that's a whole life policy, you can decide to stop making payments on that policy uh, after three years. What that means, though, is that you can stop making payments and whatever the amount that you've accumulated to that point will then become the value of the policy so that if you do die, that's what then gets paid out. So there's, it's very valuable for folks who've um, used or paid into a policy for like 20 years because the paid up value is not at a high enough level that it might make sense or they might have other assets where they're going to give money to their loved ones. And so they don't want to continue to make payments on the insurance policy. And so they stop. Nothing wrong with that. That's what a whole life policy is designed to do is to give that person that bought it options if they're still alive. Okay. Whole life policies never expire and the rates never change. What that means is your policy could lapse if you stop making payments on it. But as long as you continue to make payments into the policy, it will not expire and the rates never change. So a term policy, <clears throat> those rates go up every time the uh, term renews. Then last, tobacco uh, rates are the number one thing that affects the rates of insurance, as I showed you before. So you always got to be cognizant of the fact that somebody smokes or vapes or uses marijuana, any one of those, then that person has to be considered a tobacco user. The next product is the 10-year renewable convertible term. It's available in all states and provinces. And like I said, uh, it when it renews after 10 years, <clears throat> the rate goes up. So during its 10-year life or during its 10-year term, uh, the rate is exactly the same every single month. However, what happens is if you have a whole life policy, it's going to be more expensive. Your term life policy is going to be less expensive for the same amount of money. But as time goes on, the rate for that term life policy will exceed the monthly rate for the whole life because the company needs to get all its money. Usually what happens with people with term is that when they start to get too expensive, they kill their term policy. So term in the long run is not the best solution for managing your money, being financially responsible, et cetera, et cetera. All it's doing is it's protecting you for a short period of time. Yes, Jenny. Uh, real quick on the paid up benefits. So um, is there an option? I, I, I haven't done a claim or I haven't really had clients that um, that long. Paid up, is it a paid up with like a time certain? Is it whatever, you know, do they have the option? This the face amount that they'll have until- It won't be the face amount. What happens is at any point that they want to take a paid up option, <clears throat> they would call us and then uh, 
and we tell them how much the policy would be worth. If you look at a POS, Jenny, it will tell you what the paid up amount is once they get to a certain point. And yeah. then you can let the client know, hey, if you want to do a paid option, here's how you do it. And then they have to fill out a form uh, and do all the rest of that. And then it endows at age 100? They're, buying, sure. they're, getting a paid up, they're getting a paid up policy. Let's say at age 65, don't want to pay anymore. They're going to take the cash value paid. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's 120, I believe, because all of our policies will go to the age of 120. Okay. Yes, Dre, what can I do for you? So a quick question uh, pertaining to commissions. So like say for a 10 year uh, renewable. So with, with our residual commissions and whatnot, are we getting paid every time they renew it or for like the next 10 years? Like how does that work? So for any of the policies that are renewed and we're gonna go through commissions next uh, week, but for any policies that you sell, say I sold a policy the month, this month, right now, today, I sold a policy next year when that policy renews, you would get 5% of that policy's worth. Okay. Okay. And then when we talk about the 10 years after working with us for 10 years and fully vested, if you're working with us, you get the full 5%. If you left us for any reason, you would get the vested amount. So if you work with us for five years, okay, and you left, a policy that you wrote, you would get 5% credit of, and then you would get paid 50% of that, right? Because it's five years. Every year you are invest, you're vested 10%. So that's why the whole plan is set up so that you work with us at least 10 years, you're 100% invested for all the renewals that you're eligible to receive. Does that help? Yeah, that helped. Okay. So it's level for the 10 year renewable and convertible term. It is renewable, it is guaranteed to renew every 10 years. You do not have to submit any additional medical information because that information was already determined at the time that the application was written. And it's also convertible, meaning that at any point in time, we can convert it to a whole life policy without any additional medical information. And the people that work in the POS leads, that's what they do all the time. They're converting, uh, 10 year RNCs. Now, when you convert a term policy, let's say the term policy was worth $100,000. If you convert a term policy and you only want to convert 50,000 of it, you can do that, but the 10 year 100,000 policy goes away. So it doesn't matter how much you convert it for, the moment it's converted, the original term policy is gone. Okay. You can issue that anywhere from the age 50 to 60. You can't give a term policy to somebody over 60. Why is that, Erica Price? Why can't I sell a term policy to someone over 60? Um, because they we start doing the senior graded policies. Uh, you're almost there. You're close. William, France, uh, William uh, why can't we sell somebody over 60 a term policy? Uh, because the likelihood of death is high and, and we're not going to have enough time to recoup the money for that policy. Exactly. The likelihood of death is too high once you hit 60, <clears throat> right? Now, the good thing about 10-year uh, renewal and convertible terms, you can sell it as a standalone policy if you wish, right? So if you are price conscious with somebody and they don't want the whole life because maybe they have something else, you can still sell a 10-year term policy to them, Okay. ADB, <clears throat> accidental death benefit approved in all states and provinces. Oh, the other thing about the term, I forgot to tell you this, it expires at 65 no matter when you bought it. So if you try to sell a veteran who's 58, a 10-year term policy, it's going to expire at 65. Okay, term policies all expire at 65. Accidental death benefit available in all states and provinces. You can only issue them between the ages of five to 64, and the max amount you can provide is $200,000. That particular policy expires at 70. So you can see if you start to talk to somebody who's older, <clears throat> all you have left for them is the senior graded whole life product. Waiver of premium ages 15 to 55, it waives the premium <clears throat> for six months. I'm sorry, it waives the premium if in fact somebody has six months of total disability. And the way it works is they have to pay the premium for six months while they're completely disabled, and then we'll refund it to them. 
Now, total disability is defined as not being able to work at usual business or occupation. Okay. Senior rated whole life, I alluded to before, it's issued from the ages of 60 to 80. It has a completely separate application from the what we call a super combo or anybody under the age of 60. The maximum amount is 34,999 and it's graded in its first three years. So why in the world would we grade anything? Um, Terry, have you passed your state mandated test yet? Unmute, yes. Okay. In your state mandated test, did you have a question about graded policies? It was in the, the study, but I don't remember it actually being a question they asked. Okay, no worries. So <clears throat> we, as an insurance company, want to reduce our risk. It's what we do all the time. We reduce risk as much as possible. When you're selling to somebody over the age of 60, a couple of interesting points. First and foremost, if somebody lives three years after a policy is written, the likelihood that they'll leave, live at least 10 years is high. Okay, It's high. If they can make it past three years of the time the policy is written, the likelihood they'll get to at least 10 years is high. If they get to 10 years, we get a majority of our premiums paid. So take that in, under consideration. The second thing is, if you don't live past three years, then the risk to the company goes up, correct? And so we grade the policy in the sense that the first year, if you were to die and you're over the age of 60, we'll pay out 25% the second year 50 and the third year 75. So we are looking at our actuary tables and we know the percentage of people who die when we write a policy and they're 60 or older. So in order to reduce our risk, we limit the payout accordingly in years one, two, and three. The other thing that we do to limit our risk for seniors is we cap how much they can purchase from us in total. What I mean by in total is if a senior came to me and bought a policy today for $30,000, I would sell it to them. And if they came to me next year and they wanted to get another $30,000, I couldn't sell that. The max I could sell is $4,999. The max that we will provide coverage on a senior is $34,999. So that's the second way that we mitigate risk by limiting our exposure with all the seniors that we rate. So that's a really good thing because otherwise we wouldn't write policies on seniors and we want to because, you know, it's a good market. So again, year one, we pay out a graded amount of 25%, then 50, and then 75 for years two and three. Patricia, does that make sense to you why we do that? Patricia, are you there? No? Barbara yes. Cunningham, are you there? Oh, Patricia's there. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. So it does make sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Interestingly enough, most seniors that I've ever sat down with, talked to throughout my entire career are, if they want to buy insurance, they're ecstatic that they can get some. They do understand that they're older and they're probably be closer to dying. But most seniors at that point in their life, what they're worried about is not putting the burden of the expense onto their loved ones. Whereas a lot of other people, when they buy insurance, it's not necessarily the expense of the funeral they're so much worried about. It, I mean, they are, don't get me wrong, but they're more worried about the fact that their income is going to go away for their loved ones, right? And so if they have kids and whatnot, they have expenses, they want to make sure that's taken care of. The B2000 is a special accidental death benefit. It can be issued anywhere from the age of 5 to 72, but it does expire at 75 and it's limited. It is straight 10, 25, and 50. Doesn't change. It's very straightforward. Then we have the two policies, <clears throat> the children's rider and the head start. I am not a fan of the children's rider. I'm much more a fan of the head start. So the children's rider says that if you sold a whole life policy to a parent, you can add a writer to that whole life policy that says if a child if the child dies, right, before the age of 21, <clears throat> the parent's going to get paid out the 
Now you could actually um, convert it <clears throat> to $50,000 at age 21 for that child if you wanted to do that. But that is not a policy on the child. That is just a writer on the parent's policy. I'd much prefer that we do the second one, which is a head start, which in fact is coverage on the child. The ages could be issued are newborn to 17, and you could include what's called a guaranteed insurability option, which in fact allows that child to purchase additional coverage in tranches of 25,000 every three years, starting at the age of 25, without being required to fill out the medical information. So think about how powerful that is if you're talking to a parent and there's a history of cancer in the family. You can guarantee that that child will have access to another $150,000 in coverage. I mean, they have to pay for it, don't get me wrong, but they don't have to have a uh, rather disclose their medical history. Right? If I have girls, and my family has the breast cancer gene, I probably would want this product, right? Because I'm setting my girls up for their families and I'm giving her the ability to get something that if they would determine that there's a breast cancer gene, she might not be eligible for. It. So it's extraordinarily powerful. And even if there wasn't the breast cancer gene, there's more value in the Head Start because it allows the uh, child to have access to coverage at the age that I bought it as the parent. So let's say I bought $25,000 of coverage. I bought it when the child was four. When that child turns 20, I could give them the ownership of that policy for $25,000 payout, but the rate remains the same. Remember a whole life policy, the rate never changes. So now they're paying eight bucks a month for $25,000 in coverage. And if they took it over at the age of 25, they're probably going to pay a little bit more. And if they waited till they were 40 or 30, they're going to pay a lot more. So in effect, what I've now done with my child is I help them financially reduce their cost, which most kids, when they're in their 80s, 20s, whatever, they don't really care about, but they start thinking about that when they start having families. Now they're worried about their own kids. So imagine you're talking to some parents, <clears throat> some parents, imagine you're talking to a family and they have kids, you start talking like this, they get it. They're like, oh, I can do this for my children. I can set them up for success. Whereas the child writer is useful, <clears throat> but it's not going to set the kids up for success. Really all it's doing is protecting against the children's death. So understanding that, I'm talking to a parent, She's a single parent. She has five kids. She can't afford to put all five kids on a Head Start program. In that situation, I would probably do a child writer. So that way, if any one of her children died, she would get $10,000 payout to pay for the funeral fall expenses. That's when I would do a child writer. If I don't have that particular type of situation, I usually am going to convince a uh, family that if they want to get coverage on their kids, they should do a Head Start program. Greta, does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. Okay. So that's the head start. And we'll go through all this again. Don't, don't worry. I just want to give you the, the, the uh, term to, uh, what is this? Term to 60. Oops. A lot of little things do it. Term to 65 and term to 100. You can see that the term 65 is approved. We don't sell this. It is available, uh, you theoretically could, but it's not something we recommend because why would you sell a term product for that long? You'd rather sell a 10 year term in order to give the client the ability to convert that to a whole life product, which is gonna be in their best interest anyway, okay? We also have something called the term to 100. Again, certain areas we can't sell that because the laws in the states are in that province or region. And then we have these two others or yeah, again, these are available, but we don't sell these, right? The 50 or 30 year decreasing term to protect against mortgage. So let's see how well people understand what's going on. Uh, Ash, why would I not want to sell a 15 or 30 year decreasing term now as opposed to 20 years ago? 
Um, it's riskier. It's riskier to who? To the insurance company or to you if you bought it? Uh, to uh, to me as a client. Okay, to you as a client. So here's the idea behind a decreasing term. They say you have a 30-year mortgage, you buy a 30-year decreasing term. So in year one or for those months, your cost is going to be this much because it's protecting against the entire mortgage that you have. Every year, theoretically, your mortgage is going down. So your protection goes down until you get to the end of 30 years. <clears throat> you no longer need the protection because theoretically the mortgage is paid off. Okay. But guess what? How many people actually keep their original mortgage for 30 years? 30 years ago, well, not even 30, but let's say 30 years ago, you had a certain percentage of the population that did. 50 years ago was higher percentage. When my grandfather was doing that, it was really high. And now today, it's almost nil. Because what happens? People buy a house, they either move or what else do they do? They refinance, they lower their expense, knowing at some point they're either going to sell the house or do something like that, or they take the equity out, right? So a 30-year or 15-year decreasing term has no value anymore because people, if they're going to protect against the mortgage expense, what we do is we give them a 10-year renewable and convertible because within that 10 years, we know either they're going to refinance or they're going to sell the house, they're going to move, okay? So we don't do that as much anymore. The 20-year level term, same concept. We don't do that. We sell a 10-year renewable and convertible. Now, the last, not the last one, but this one here, this is the one I was talking about, the A7-1000, commonly referred to as the A7-1. A7-1, it can be sold anywhere from the ages of 18 to 74 individually. You can protect the family uh, with kids underage, but you can't sell the children directly their own A7-1, Okay. So the base rate is $50 for emergency room visit, $100 a day for staying in the hospital. And if you go into the emergency, or I'm sorry, the intensive care unit, then it's double that for 14 days. If you're in the intensive care unit longer than 14 days, then the daily rate goes back to 100. The base <clears throat> accidental death is 10,000, then 20 for auto accidents, 50,000 for common carrier. Notice that the kids are 2, 4, and 10, as opposed to 10, 20, and 50. Jenny, why are the kids paid out, or I'm sorry, if they were to die in action, why do we pay out less for the children? I don't know. I know it's just, uh, what, 20%. I don't know why. It's because theoretically, uh, the kids don't have as much of an economic impact to the family. <clears throat> okay. Then if you do double, triple, quadruple, quintuple, or in the state of Florida, sextuple, then what happens is you just multiply the base times double, triple, quadruple, quintuple. Okay. Hawaii, um, what is that? Minnesota, Montana, and South Dakota <clears throat> have different numbers because the language in the laws of the state require us to provide different language. We can still sell it, it just gives it a different policy number. Okay. In the US, we can do the A74, which is an accident policy. Canada, we uh, can't do that. <clears throat> and there's how it's paid out right there very specifically. We have a critical illness policy and we have a lump sum cancer policy. Now in our course, we don't include that when we build our plans <clears throat> for a variety of reasons. Because when we started the course, it was focused on veterans and on veterans uh, can't provide a critical illness policy. Uh, but from now we do all these other markets. You can provide those if you wish. You just, what I would advise you to do is just check with your upline how they want you to do it. Because you have to understand how it works, what the payouts are, and what the pitch would be to a client for that. I can tell you this, if there's any history of heart attack with any of my clients, I'm going to include that. Even if it means their whole life cost goes down a little bit because they want to stay in the same budget, I'm going to include that automatically because it's going to matter, right? I'm going to say, hey, do you want 10, 25, or 50? Notice that it only pays out one time. So if I sold it to somebody and that person had a heart attack and it pays out, great, they survived the heart attack, they end up getting a second heart attack and survive, that policy is not gonna pay out the second time. It only pays out one time. <clears throat> if you have a major organ transplant, 
or total loss of hearing or loss of eyesight, it will pay out. You have the lump sum cancer plan, except California, Virginia, Manitoba, 18 and 64, same concept, 10, 25, or 50. It's only paid out on the first diagnosis of cancer. So the point of that money is to pay for all the ancillary things besides the healthcare costs, like the medicine that's not covered under your healthcare plan, uh, travel back and forth. I mean, you use it for whatever you want. That's how I would explain it to a client that, hey, I'm going to give you $50,000. You can use that for anything you want. A lot of clients use it for travel, to bring family in, to see you, pay for accommodations, whatever you wish. Okay. And I believe that that is the last one. So we have, again, cancer, critical illness. We have the accident policy, but Really, what we focus on is the A71 policy. You should include that every single time that you sell because when the A71 is included on any policy that you sell, the retention rate on that policy goes up by seven and a half percent. So, what does that mean? <clears throat> if you sell a whole life policy with that on A71, the retention on that policy is, let's say, 80%, it means it's going to go past one year. So, you're going to get renewals out of it. If you included the A71, the number of people who keep that policy goes up by seven and a half percent. I use this to help tie down and keep it. I have had clients tell me that they were thinking about counseling an insurance policy, but they used the benefit of the A71. They got injured in an accident and they got paid, because usually I saw a quintuple, they got paid 500 bucks. Just that alone would be worth it to somebody to keep the entire policy. That's why the retention rate increases by seven and a half. The A71 policy, in my opinion, is the game changer for American income in conjunction with the freedom of choice. Those two things alone should provide incredible value to the average person. Then uh, skip those two, skip those two. We got the Head Start, we got the Child Rider, we have the B2000, the Senior Graded Whole Life, the Waiver of Premium, the Accidental Death Benefit, and the 10 Year Renewable and Convertible, and the Whole Life product. Do I have any questions about our products? Carrie Quabrick, your hand is up. What can I do for you? Yes, sir. I was just looking at the emails that you sent over. Where can I find that document? I've been trying to go through them and find that. Yeah, it's in the uh, first attachment, 01, and the name of it first. is AO National New Agent Packet. It's okay. on, or if you're in the packet, it's on page mm -hmm. one. Huh. Okay, I'm going to print that out. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. I would print that out. I would print out actually the entire New Agent Packet because there's a lot of pages in there that every single time you sit down with a client, you're going to want to refer to. Okay. So Faisal, what can I do for you? Um, yes. Well, as new agents, how do you know, you know, which product uh, or best product to offer for your, for your client? I mean, you're going to build the whole life product in conjunction with the A71 in the veteran market. Every other market, you're going to do the whole life product in conjunction with the A71 and a 10 year renewable and convertible to protect against income loss. If you do that every single time and you never change that for your entire career, you're going to be highly successful. However, in about six, seven months, you're going to start to learn about well, what should I do? How should I package the portfolio to meet the needs of the client? So experience will give you the guidance on what you ultimately you want to provide. But if you start off the way I told you, you're going to be just fine. Okay. And is this all set up as a default in the back end while we're going through the system? No, you're the one, remember, when you build the plan, yeah. you're the one building the plan. You have to put in the A71 and you have to put in the, uh, the whole life. And the reason why there's not a default, as you say, is because we don't know if you have your accidental health license. Okay. We don't it can be a senior graded whole life policy that you need to sell, right? So in training, I give you kind of the basics and I give you uh, the template but it's really going to be based on who you're selling to, where they're at in terms of their age, and what state they're in and whether or not you have your accidental license. Okay, got it. Rebecca Browning, what can I do for you? Going back to the Head Start plan, mm -hmm. is there a cap amount that the child can... $25,000. 
every three years or is that just like the one like after okay. you turn 25 you get it and then three years later you get it again okay so let's be clear right so in the head start program what you do is you sell a twenty five thousand dollar whole life policy to the child it's mm -hmm. going to be like eight dollars <throat> and then you're going to add a couple of bucks for the cost for the guaranteed insurability option now what that mm -hmm. option means is when the child turns 25 they can purchase an additional $25,000 every three years. So 25, 28, 31, 34, 37, and 40. The result okay. of that is they can get an additional $150,000 in coverage. They have to pay the rates, but they don't have to provide any medical information. So that regardless of their medical condition, it's guaranteed we're going to give them the coverage. Gotcha. Okay. That makes more sense. Thank so you. anytime I talk to a parent, I'm always, I mean, I believe in that so much <clears throat> that I even will, because I don't make that much money off that, right? You'll learn it, the commissions. I will give that to parents every single time if they can afford it. I will build it into their portfolio because it matters. Think about what we're doing. We have a fiduciary responsibility. We need to take into account their perspective more than ours. And we're here to take care of people. On the worst day of their lives, they're going to be able to have something to fall back on. In addition to that, if they have children and those children survive, we want to give them the best possible experience of dealing with us as agents in American Income Life. So imagine I talk to somebody who's 38, 34 years old, they have kids. Mm -hmm. I give the guarantee and insurability option on the head start. <clears throat> Their kids become 25, and now they want to buy more insurance. Who are they going to call? Their parents. Well, and who will the parents call? Oh, the insurance company. But I don't right. want them to call the insurance company. Who do I want them to call? Me. H. Right? I mean, I'm done all the work. I built the relationship. I want to try to keep them as clients for as long as possible. So I'm going to have the parents call me like, hey, my son, my daughter just turned 25. They want to buy the additional 25000 It's guaranteed. Hey, not a problem. Let me help you out. Do it right now. Piece of cake. If we provide a good experience for our clients, right from the word go and providing them products that make sense for them and their family in the future, they will come back not only to American Income Life, I want them to come back to each one of you. In my mind, the best scenario is they never call any other insurance agent, no matter who calls them, until they get a hold of you. That's gotcha. the best scenario for me. All right, Greta, what can I do for you? Oh, so you mentioned that the best package to put together was the whole life on the eight one seven zero zero, correct? Well, no, I didn't say it was the best package. I'm saying every single time that you put a plan together, you're going to include the whole life product, or if they're a senior, the senior grade whole life product, and the A seven one. Okay. Every single time, if they're working, I'm sorry, if they're outside of the veteran market. You're also going to include a 10-year renewable and convertible to address uh, loss of income. Okay, thank you. Yep, Kevin Weiss, what can I do for you? Just to just to be clear, um, regarding the hospital plan, if a family, which includes primary and spouse and two children are all included in the hospital plan, each family member can only claim once? Are you talking about the A71? Yes. No, the A71, it's on a per incident basis. We pay out based on the incident. So let me give you an example. My father has Alzheimer's and on New Year's Eve, he falls down, he breaks his hip. He goes into the hospital during the pandemic and he's there for 30 days because the hospital can't release him to a recuperation home because he has Alzheimer's and COVID. So they need to keep them the whole time. So they would, we as an insurance company would pay out 30 days times 500. So he would have made some pretty good money. He goes to the uh, house once the COVID, he, he's out, out of COVID now. He gets released. He has Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's. So he goes to sleep. And what does he do in the middle of the night that all men 80 years old do? They get up to use the restroom. He has Alzheimer's. So what doesn't he remember? He doesn't remember that he has a broken hip. So he gets up, he breaks his hip because he falls again. This time it's the other hip. 
So they take him to the emergency room. They put him in the hospital. We would have paid out again because it's a per separate episode. There's no limit to the number of accidents that we'll take care of. The limit is that on a per basis, if you spend the night in the hospital, we only pay up to 365 days. So if you're injured, you're in the hospital for 420, you're not going to get paid for those additional days. Okay, thank you. All right, Greta, you have another question or is that from before? That's from before, Jenny Moss. I have not ever done, I've only just done the child writer. I've never done Head Start. Um, will you probably be covering it when we go through EAP on how you would do that? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I'll show you exactly how to do it. You don't ask that now, okay. Yeah, perfect. Carrie, your hand is up. Did you have another question or is that from before? No, I don't have another question. I'll put it down. Okay. Awesome, everybody. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a break and we're going to come back and go through the scripts and look at it very uh, relative to HP Pro to understand what we saw Johnny do. So come back in 12 minutes. So that's going to be that's going to be too complicated for me. So let's just come back at 10 minutes to the top of the hour, everybody. OK, thank you. <music> everybody we're back <clears throat> let's get those cameras fired up <clears throat> let's see if we can't go through a number of things a number of things bum, 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 bum. first of all zach if you can hear me <clears throat> guess what i'm gonna be your training guy so i am the guy so do me a favor zach just direct message me your cell phone number and we will chat once the course is over and I'll take care of you. All right, so now we know policy information. We've played a little bit around in HP Pro. It might be useful to take a look at our scripts <clears throat> to get a nice idea of the scripts that we will go through relative to presenting to clients. So what I'm going to do is I am going to share my screen and let's take a look at some of our scripts all right so i'm gonna actually bring up all of our scripts and show you the differences so we got the two there there's going to be the mcgruff and there's going to be the no cost legal will kit for canada all right so let's do the credit union script first near and dear to my heart is the opening <clears throat> and once you have the opening done uh, connect with the client provided your personal value statement of some type then you're going to say, hey, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen. Let me know when you can see it. And then I'm going to turn my camera off. From then on, the camera is off. And we do that with new hires <clears throat> or new agents. And the reason we do that is because uh, new agents typically have a 50% increase in their close rate when their camera is off. Susie Webster, why do you think that is? Likely because it adds a comfort level for the agent, um, not being on camera, not being under that pressure and allows them to read um, instead of naturally speaking to the client, um, then the client doesn't see us doing that. Okay. I think that's probably a fair assessment. If the client watches you and you continue to look away or you're nervous or something like that, that'll come through the camera and your credibility will probably take a hit. But if you turn your camera off, <clears throat> then they can't see anything that you're doing, whether you're having a fear spike or not, I think you can only hear your voice and then what you're displaying on your desktop. So it's really important that you turn it off. If you notice Johnny Ning left his on the whole time, maybe some of the folks that you're going to observe will leave theirs on, that's okay. Uh, through the course though, we want you to turn it off until once you've been released and you're in the field, once you feel comfortable enough to leave it on, then that's entirely up to you, okay? So we turn our camera off, then we say, hey, what's our reason for meeting on Zoom? Make this a little bit bigger so we can then see this a little more, okay. So we say, hey, you know, the Seattle City Credit Union found that members have a very serious gap in their personal insurance benefits. A lot of them needed help with estate planning. There are a lot of words here. So it's very key for us to make sure that we sound as natural as possible. If you don't sound natural when you're doing it, you sound like you're reading something. 
And the more it sounds like you're reading something, the less connection you'll have with the client. But we go through A3 and they say, we have this meeting for three reasons. We want to complete the credit union member survey. We want to issue your ad and certificate, no cost benefits package. And then we want to determine if you qualify for the permanent insurance benefits that they have established for members, okay? If I look at the veteran presentation, same concept, I turn my camera off, <clears throat> and then we say this is the copy of the letter that you received. So we have to share, you can see right there, share the <clears throat> HP Pro group letter, right? So we're sharing that letter, we're showing that to them, and then we're reading all this information, sorry, right here. Hey, for three reasons, number one, number two, number three, and that the service organizations partner with us and design benefits specifically for their, uh, for veterans and their families, right? So we're gonna walk through that and, hold on one second, there we go. We're gonna walk through that and say all this. And then we go to page two, which then, hey, at the end, there's a report form. Make sure that we fill that out. It was sent by, it goes back to your state adjutant. If we go back to the credit union, <clears throat> we talk about the meeting for the Zoom, and then we go right into the survey. So there's a different thing. There's a report form that you do with the veterans, but there's a survey that you do on the front end with the credit union member. If I'm in the McGruff Child Safe Kit, again, same concept, uh, same concept in terms of opening. I show them uh, the letter, I turn my camera off, and then I walk them through a warm up. Hey, so let me ask you, is the first time you've heard about McGruff Safe Kids Kits? And again, if we go back up here, you see the Canadian logo for uh, AO North. So they may, for all of us, <clears throat> they may have a different script in your upline that they want you to use. I am completely okay with that. The scripts are just words. I am giving you kind of what I call the basics. If you learn this and you use this and you never used anything else, you would do well. However, every one of the uplines have experience in their markets with what works for them. And so they may give you some tweaks. I'm totally okay with that. At the end of the day, though, you will determine what you're going to say to your client. No one else is going to determine it because you're an independent business owner, right? We believe that the script is the things that's going to help you be successful because they're proven. They're tried and true. No matter what background you come from, what level of experience you have with meeting with people on Zoom, selling, whatever the case may be, <clears throat> if you follow the scripts that we give you, you will see success. So we go through the A3 warm up, and then we go, hey, the reasons that we're meeting, and then we talk about the McGruff Child Safe Kids Kit, and then we're showing that kit. If we're in the no cost legal will kit, again, same concept. We do a warm up, they tell us why we're meeting on Zoom. And then they go into the family information guide. And then you start that process, okay? So the way that you get these various things that you're going to show <clears throat> is predicated on what you put into the um, HP Pro to start off with. So if I have my HP Pro up here, which I just so happen to have, I'm gonna launch HP Pro, <clears throat> I'm gonna put other, if I can learn how to type, I'm going to put other, I'm going to select other, I'm going to select a state or a territory or region, and then depending upon which one of these I pick, will determine what's going to be available for me, if that makes sense, okay? So in this case, what I want to pick is the credit union, and the credit union type is going to be return card, and uh, I'll pick whatever I said the credit union was over here. Boom, I said it was. You got to scroll down all here until you show the letter. There it is, SG3EU. So I'm going to throw in here S3GEU. Did I do that right? No? SG3. SG3. A little dyslexic, SG3. There we go, select that. Then it comes with the group name. And now if I start the presentation, on the left-hand side, everything that I'm gonna need to show that client will show up here, okay? It doesn't matter if I did it with a veteran or if I did it with a no-cost legal, legal will kit, whatever I need to show up will be in this gray box. 
that I need to display it to the client. If I want to display other things to the client, I could just hit more and every single one of the benefits are here. Okay, everything is here. But if I click le less, then what shows up is that which the script tells me I need to share with the client. So it doesn't matter if it's no cost legal will kits, child safe kits, credit union, veteran, it's all there. Okay. So then we come back here. We're looking at the uh, text. So let's go back to the veterans. This is the one I started off with. You're going to show the AD and D certificate if, in fact, it's a response card. If it's a PAVIT or an online lead, you don't need to do Section A3. Then in Section A4, you're saying, hey, here's your burial and will kit for veterans. And then you go back to the concept of, hey, I'm going to share this thing with you. So if I come back here and I type other, sorry, if I type other here, and instead of the credit union, I'm going to show the veteran, and I'm going to go to return card, and I know that that one's SGMAD, select that, group name comes up, start presentation. What we're talking about now is the veterans burial and will kit. So if I click that display, <clears throat> then that document pops up that I start to fill in, right? The people to be notified, the important numbers and websites, all of that information will be in there, okay? Then uh, it's the family information guide that I'm filling out that I just talked about. You go through all of this <clears throat> and we ask questions in there. So we start with insurance policy, social media, funeral service requests, and then we display the freedom of choice certificate, and then we go through the no-cost legal will kit. So let me show you what that looks like. You can follow on in your script. If I click on the uh, veteran, borough veteran will kit, this page comes up. The same function that applies in the credit union. Um, I'm going to click on this. I'm going to add information in here, and then I'm going to click on the floppy disk to save the information. You want the information always saved because if anything happens while you're in the middle of a presentation, you can recover it. But if you didn't save it and something happens, you got to start all over. So then you fill in each section with a clicking on that, putting in the spouse name, et cetera, et cetera. Then you come down here, veterans information, do the same thing. <clears throat> and then the person to be notified for all markets that use the family information guide or the financial information guide, it works the same way. For the veterans, you have four, I'm sorry, you have three, three, and two. So three family, three emergency contacts, and two service members. For every other market, you will have four family and four emergency contacts. So the way you do that is you click here, you start to enter their information in here. So I'm going to say John Jones, okay? Relationship is father. And then I would enter in the rest of the information as required. Now, as you go through this and you come down to the third one, <clears throat> you don't say, hey, we're done. What you say is who's next? Because psychologically, if I am directing you and I'm controlling our engagement and I say who's next and I click this little plus button right here, I can then fill in another one. And what I advise all of you to do is keep clicking that plus button until the client tells you to stop or they don't have any more for family. So you can put as many as you want in here. And then you come down to the emergency contacts and you can do the same thing again if you want it. Don't limit yourself to the number of people that you're putting in these sections. The record I think is 128. Okay, so it doesn't matter how many you put in, you can put them all in here. Now, obviously, because it's the veteran market, you can add service members in here. Conceptually, it works exactly the same. You can add another one. And all the rest of the markets, though, all you will have are those two. Once you have that information filled in, you're going to go to the next thing. So if I go back to this script here, <clears throat> the script says, okay, I entered the people to be notified. And then you turn the page, which means now you're here. You're going to talk about financial institution, last will and testament, insurance policy, digital accounts. So you're now going through financial institution, last will and testament, insurance policy, social media. So you just read the text as it says. And then when you get to the funeral request, say the final page is about your funeral service request. Let me ask you, we plan on being buried in the state of national cemeteries and leaning towards a cremation. 
So you actually ask the question and you give an answer. So they're going to go, I'm going to be cremated. So you do that, you hit plus, and now it's saved. And see, draft has been saved successfully. For every one of the markets, we talk about the freedom of choice. So when we go to the text, we say, as you can see, there's a spot for National Cemetery or private. They set up a permanent benefit for you. They have me cover called the freedom of choice. In order to display the freedom of choice, you scroll down, and it's very tough to see, but that icon right there, that's what you click on. So when I click on it, freedom of choice comes up. I want you to scroll down so that your name is displayed right here. It's more powerful when your name is on it because then it looks like, hey, you're the one that's giving it. Okay. <clears throat> so you, then you show the freedom of choice. And then to get out of that freedom of choice, once you're done with the text, you just click anywhere else. And then you're out of the freedom of choice. So you go through, you read this text here, <clears throat> you go to the no cost legal will kit, and you say, hey, the second part is cool. So now I've done this. I'm going to turn the page. And now I'm at the last will and testament or the no cost legal will kit. And then you just walk them through this, talk about the various items. I think we saw Johnny Ning do this, right, Barbie? Johnny Ning was talking through this. You don't fill anything out here. You just give them the information. So in the uh, veteran, you're going through all of that. You're walking through each one of the pages very quickly. And then you get to the important facts about your burial benefits. That means you turn the page, you turn the page, and there you are. <clears throat> That's where you're at, okay? For all of us, this has been now updated. It used to say uh, $300, <clears throat> and now you get paid $893 for a plot and burial allowance. Doesn't matter where you're gonna get buried, you're gonna get that 893, okay? So that's what's here. So I need to fix the uh, script on that, but just read what this says right here. So this is the important information in the veteran market. You can see we go through all of that. So you can see right here, it says what you're entitled to is up to $300. That's now been changed. You're entitled to 893. So all of you in the veteran market should make note of that. And then you keep going down and then you download the burial and will kit. So this is important for all of us, whether it's the family information guide, what's the burial and will kit, we need to download this. All of us, so the, because you're going to send it to the client when you're done with the presentation, whether they buy or not, they get this. So it doesn't matter what market you're in, you're going to download whatever document you opened up here. So to download this, you're gonna go over here in the upper right-hand corner with the down arrow with the line underneath it. You're gonna click on it. <clears throat> and when you click on it, it waits for a second because now it's going to create a PDF file. And then because I'm using Windows 11, that PDF file will then, I think, show up down here telling me that I can open it. In Windows 10, I think it would pop it up and show it to you immediately. But you can see down here, it says Veterans Burial and Will Kit. I am going to go ahead and open that. And then it will show me everything I put in here. So I didn't put any information in here until I got there. There's John Jones. So you've pre-populated this thing for your client. You're going to save it in any naming convention that you want because you're going to send it to the client you're going to email it to the client it's the first thing that you're going to add to the email to the client once you're done with the presentation <clears throat> the other thing i would tell you is that when you have this thing entirely filled out don't delete this file because this file has what all the contact information for all the people if anything happens to your mobile planet, you can't get your referrals, you can get to this thing because you have that. It's on your computer, right? So it's really important that you keep these. So what I usually do is I put the date and I put the name of the family that I met with. So I can go back and do a search and say, oh, here's John Jones. Boom, look it up and get the phone number. That has saved me countless times. All right. So we can go ahead and close that because now we know we're going to save it. <clears throat> and now we're done with this thing here in HP Pro. If I go back to the credit union, in the credit union, we turn the pages and download the financial information guide. Same concept in the credit union market. Okay. Now we get to sponsorships, oops, sponsorships and referrals, whether the credit union market or in the veteran market. 
I am going to say, hey, the people in the credit union market, the people you qualify, <clears throat> sorry, the credit union market, I say that people you sponsor have to qualify and be over 21 and be employed and retired. Faisal, why in the world would I care if somebody's over 21 and they're employed or retired? Um, I guess they need to be um, not sure. So it's for us because we want to reach out to people who can afford our products. If they're retired or employed, we know they have money. And if they're over 21, they're more than likely interested in insurance. Whereas if you're under 21, usually that's not the case. Okay. <clears throat> so this helps us, right? So the credit union would say, hey, who's next? Who's next? And we display the sponsorship program. So the way that we do that, once we're done with this, we download it, we can click that off. And now we can go down here and click on the sponsorship program. If I click on that sponsorship program, what I show is what everybody is going to receive. Burial and Will Kit, Gift Certificate, and the No Cost Legal Will Kit because of this particular market, which is fine, but I want to get to the actual sponsorship tool itself, which is right here. The first one that shows up is John Jones. You see that? But John Jones is grayed out. I can't do anything with it because I need to activate him. So this is kind of a crucial thing here <clears throat> in the veteran market because I'll bring that up here and show you why. What we say is we say everyone you mentioned in the Family Information Guide will automatically receive access to the veteran legacy benefits we just covered. As you're saying that, you're going to activate them. Because once you activate them, then the number shows up and now you can see that their information is available to you. If you didn't activate that at the time I'm telling you to, and you wait <clears throat> till later, here's the problem. There's a paragraph right here that says, lastly, because we don't solicit veterans and their families, the VSOs require your permission to contact them. We want that to be there because we're talking about the veterans we're going to reach out to, not these people that are in the family information guide. Okay, so for all of us in the veteran market, we don't want to wait to activate. We want to activate so that the client sees that they're gifting $2,000. And we want to do that before we get to this paragraph. So I'm saying as you read this paragraph right here, you activate everybody. So that way the client knows that they're going to be receiving the uh, $2,000 AD&D certificate and all the rest of it. Okay. Then you're going to in the veteran market, you're going to enter additional sponsors. In the credit union market, <clears throat> you're going to enter additional sponsors right here in A9. A little bit of a different concept, but it's still the same. You're still opening up that sponsorship program and putting people in there. And then you can text the leads. So one of the best practices is once you have everybody listed in there, you say, hey, <clears throat> you can let them know I'm going to give them a call. And then, in fact, they all receive text. So what I'm going to do is send you a group text. So let's say you have 10 referrals. What you're going to do is send a group text to the client, yourself, and one referral. And what you want the client to do is say, hey, Sam, really, you know, help me out. Uh, look forward to his call. The reason that we do that is because the credibility <clears throat> that you want to establish is not yours. It's the client's credibility with the person. Because we know that if the client is the one saying, hey, you know, you should talk to Sam, the likelihood that the referral will talk to Sam is very, very high. So that's how we generate additional or what we call plus leads or known as referrals or sponsorships. Okay, so that's how it's done here in this market, in the McGruff market, as an example. Once we went through all the different things that we talk about in the McGruff, you can see page three, we go down. In A8, there's the sponsorship, collecting referrals. Conceptually, we're doing exactly the same thing. It's just that in Canada, there's certain ways that we have to portray the child safety ID kits. And then we walk through this with them. And then we do the texting of the plus lead, same concept, right? If I go to the no cost legal will kit, Let's see if that's the same way. No cost legal will kit. We go through all that. Ooh, texting plus leads. 
And then we say, once the sponsorship program is complete, click the floppy disk icon to save the leads. So that's really important. <clears throat> once we're done and we filled all of this out, everybody's listed, hopefully 10 people, if not more. In order for those leads to actually show up in your lead inbox, you must click that little floppy disk icon. When that happens, all the leads that you have listed there will automatically and instantly be copied into the database and put into your lead inbox so that you can work them. Okay. So that's really important to understand how to do. In this case, I'm not, these are all fake leads. So I'm just going to delete them out. And now I can close it because it's all gone. And then I'm right back here. This gets us to B1 for Canada. This gets us to B1 here for the credit union. For McGruff, it gets us to B1. And for no cost legal will kit, it gets us to B1. We're only going to go through A today <clears throat> because we need to practice doing all of that. If you'll notice, let's just take the veteran, sorry, the veteran presentation. If I skip all the rest of B1, it takes us to the what? Transition to the needs analysis. And then we want to see if they qualify. You know where we're at right there? We're at the needs analysis screen which you all have done already. So I wanted you to learn how to do the options first, how to build a plan so that by the time you get through this script here and you get to the transition to needs analysis, you're ready to go. You understand how to do this. So let me show you, we're gonna do this more later, but I just wanna show you really quick. To transition to the needs analysis, you have to open the letter again that you had, you have to display it. And then what you do is you go to the second page because that letter right there is the transition. We are required to read language about transitioning because now we're gonna offer them something that costs money. So the insurance uh, director <clears throat> for the department of insurance in every province, region, territory, state, requires us to transition and we have to do that by reading language. In the veteran market, that's the language that you read right here. Uh, in the McGruff market, that's what we do right here. In the no cost legal will market, right here. And then in the credit union market, it is right there, okay? So what I wanna do is stop <clears throat> at A, and here's the reason why. <clears throat> All of you, by Saturday night, will be required to send me an email, <clears throat> pardon me, with a recording of your entire A1, regardless of what market you're in. So if you're Canadian, you're in the will kit market, you're going to send me your video for the will kit market. So we need to practice today, tomorrow, and Friday, because you can't send it to me, you can't record it before Friday night. You're going to record it. You're going to send it to me, and then Sunday morning, I am going to review all of your videos and provide you feedback on those videos. So just know, for whatever market you're in, you're going to record a video with all of Section A, or what I call Part A, for your script. You can send a copy to your upline if you wish. Uh, I don't guarantee they're going to look at it because they're really busy people, but I guarantee I will look at it because it's part of your requirement to get through the course. So I'll give you more specifics on that on Friday. I just want to give you an idea how important it is for you to start practicing your scripts and become familiar with how to navigate um, HP Pro on Zoom. So before I go into the next part, I'm willing to entertain questions. And I got to believe we have a lot of questions. There's one. All right, Greta, what can I do for you? So when you said that we have to record ourselves, uh, we have to, um, and you said, on, like it's on to part eight, you said? <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to give you the specifics for what is due Friday morning. All I want you to know now is that, oh, I'm going to have to do a video, which means you need to practice your script on okay. your own, reading it, become familiar with it, understanding how to get through all of A1. We as a group, 
We'll go into breakout rooms tomorrow afternoon and Friday morning, practicing doing this entire thing. Okay. But I will give you the homework that'll be due by Saturday night, midnight Pacific time with the recording. Okay. Oh. Kevin, what can I do for you? Yes. Um, in the family information guide regarding the contact information, you would like, I'm in Canada, so you'd like four family members and four friends. Yeah. Yes. So whenever you do this, whether we're practicing in the uh, breakout rooms or you're going to send me your recording, all of that information has to be filled out. So if okay. you're going to work with a, you're going to do role play, you will have to work it out. And part of that is not because I want to see you type something nine million times. Part of it is to understand the length of time that it takes you to get through that information. Okay. And yeah. when we are in the field, I can imagine there are situations where the people that we are talking to do not want to give that type of information. So we can't type it into the family information guide and we kind of lose the referral. That probably happens quite a bit, right? Well, so here's what I would tell you. <clears throat> if you are properly controlling the um, sit, people will believe that this is what is done. And remember, we're telling, <coughs> pardon me, I have this call. We're telling the client, no, we're telling the client that we're pre populating, we're filling it out or getting started for them. And then we're going to send it to them. So it's not like we're doing it out of thin air just to grab a bunch of information. We're doing it on their behalf. So they're going to get it. So if you're good at this and you've practiced at it, people will naturally start to give you information. What happens, however, two things. A lot of times they don't have a whole lot of people that you that they can give you because they don't fill it out. Or to your point, they may say, no, no, I don't want to do that. That's okay. That's going to happen. So if you think about it, some people are going to give you a lot. Some people are going to give you a little. When you average it out, you should be in pretty good shape. The goal would be eight referrals per sit. That is the goal that we're trying to get everybody to. And that's why we wrote the script in the way that we did. And that's why we designed HP Pro to provide the financial information guide or the family information guide in order to get the names without coming across like, hey, can you give me more people that I can call? Right. So now it's in the interest of the client to provide the information to you. I would say 90 percent of the time clients are going to give you people 10 percent of the time they may push back. And if they push back, <clears throat> pardon me, it's not the end of the world because it's not going to happen that often. OK, okay because when, when we were watching the video, it struck me that these people were very willing and very happy to give <laughs> that type of information. But it, I, I imagine that not everybody is like that. Well, I would say that if we took the time to give you a professionally edited video, we're going to show you the base, best case of scenario. Course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, there are going to be times where clients be like, I know I don't want to do this. As a matter of fact, what I have seen countless times <clears throat> in the veteran market, if we don't activate people right away and they start to put everybody in and then they say hey you know we're going to send this out that's when people balk and they're like okay i don't want that to go to this person this and then they shrink eight down to two mm -hmm. so activate people make them believe this is a being sent out as part of the process is there anybody else uh, that you would like us to send this to because you're authorized by the vso to do that and then people sometimes go no i'm good with what i got okay hey if i if i got what i wanted as the agent I'm happy, and if I put it in the family information guide and you're going to get all that information, then everybody wins. Okay. Miguel. Yeah, I was just curious. So the HP Pro is <clears throat> designed to basically help help us with our presentation. Yes. I was just kind of when does the e app come into play? Uh -huh. So what happens when you're done with the presentation? If uh, let me throw this up really quick because it's the same for virtually everybody. So we're getting ahead of ourselves, but that's cool. I like the question. So if I go all the way to the end of the script, and this is the credit union script, and I get to this page right here, the closing question, I say, hey, Miguel, do you want to do like most of the members do and go with the recommended program, or do you want to try to qualify for the enhanced program? If the member selects one of the two programs that I offered, we then move to EAP, which is that totally separate application. And I let HP Pro set to the side. Okay, I don't need to do anything with it anymore for right now. Then we move into EAP. 
and I fill out the EAP application with the client. Okay. I do need to do a couple other things in HP Pro, which is what I'm going to show you in just a couple of minutes. Uh, but after that, I'm done with HP Pro. That's the scenario of today. Two separate applications. In the future, HP Pro will integrate with EAP, so it'll just be one application that you do. The reason that we're not there yet, <clears throat> there's a lot of backend coding, and there is an incredible amount of approval process from all the states, territories, regions, provinces, for the forms that we use for the actual application. For us to take it out of what's the approved eApp today and move it into HP Pro, it is a very, very heavy lift. So we were promised at the end of 2021, we were promised at the end of 2022 that it would be done, and now we're in 2023. So eventually it will get there. It's just gonna take some time. When it does get there, We'll have a whole myriad of other things and uh, complexities that we'll have to deal with, but it will be easier than it is today in the sense that you don't have two apps that all be integrated. Okay. Uh, Patricia, what can I do for you? I don't know if I'm getting ahead of myself or not um, because it's about the video, but as we're going through and practicing, and, we, and we're going through the forms and the verbiage, are we then to be filling out the form as, as if we're with uh, our, our customer or not? Yeah, the answer is yes, because it requires it to do with another person in your role plan. Okay. So we'll be filling it out just as if they're the client all the way through, <clears throat> all of A1. Okay. Any other questions so far? Yes, William. Uh, to compound on her question, is that the is that the same for um, um, for when we have to do the assignment on Friday night? Will we will we sit there and record ourselves uh, as if the client is there and filling out all the everything? No, you you will have to have somebody in your Zoom room role playing with you. Uh, you mean after we're released on Friday for the assignment? Yes. Yeah. So the whole point of that is to show me that you can interact with somebody on Zoom and that you can navigate and do all the rest of that and they're role playing with you. I don't care if it's family member, if it's your upline, if it's another agent, if it's a student in this class, doesn't matter to me. What I care about is that you're actually engaged with somebody as you go through the entire part A of the script. Yeah, it would have to probably be with an upline or anything because I don't have any family rightly available for that. Well, what I see a lot of people do is the students get together. You can ask somebody in the class because they know exactly what you're going through because there's other parts of that homework assignment that you have to do as well. Uh, did somebody raise their hand and I just missed it because it was really fast? No? Okay. Yes, it, it was me and I was just going to ask, oh. can we pair up with somebody in class for that assignment? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah, absolutely you can. And I'll give you the details of the assignment of Friday morning, okay? All right, so we now have an idea of the script. We're going to go through more of it tomorrow, but I want to go through part uh, A so that you understand kind of how to open, how to build rapport, then how to navigate, showing the various uh, group letters if they're there, then show the specific uh, family information guide, financial information guide, or whatever else for the other two markets, and then how to go into collecting referrals or what we now call sponsorships, right? And what that then means. Keep in mind that when you fill out the family information guide, the barrel look at whatever the case may be, you need to download that to your computer because you're going to be required to send that to the client 100% of the time. And you want it as backup in case anything happens to Mobile Planet, you still have access to all the phone numbers and whatnot that you spent a lot of time getting in the first place. Okay. All right. So let's talk a little bit about phone scripts. So can somebody, or not somebody, can you bring up what different phone scripts do I have? I have a whole bunch, right? We have quite a few. So we have the phone scripts for the credit union. There's three different kinds. 
For the McGruff, we only have one. For the uh, no cost legal will kit, we only have one. And for the veteran, we have a whole bunch. So let's just take a look at one. Let's look at the McGruff Child Safe phone script. Now, again, your upline may have a different version. They may have uh, whatever they have is fine. If they want you to use something different, I'm totally okay with that. What's important though is you understand conceptually what you're trying to do. So you're basically going to call somebody and you're going to say, hey, boom, 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 boom. So let me do this with Susie Webster. Susie, you are going to be the client and I am calling you. Okay. Are we ready? Ready. Uh, ring, ring. <clears throat> Hello. Hi, Susie. Yes, it's me. Hey, Susie. My name is Sam. I am with the McGruff Child Safe Division of American Life, American Income. We work in cooperation with the National Crime Prevention Co Council uh, on the uh, McGruff Child Safe ID client uh, kits. How are you today? I'm great, thanks. How are you? I'm good. Uh, I'm all right. Uh, I'm calling because they received a request for, I guess, two of the child safe kits back in February 2nd. Is that is that right? Did you order two? Yes, I do have two children. Thank you. Okay, so but let's try again. Ring, ring. Hello. Hi, Susie. Yes. Hi, Susie. My name is Sam. I'm actually with the McGruff Child Safe Division of American Income. We work in cooperation with the National Crime Prevention Council on your McGruff Child Safe ID kits. How are you doing today? I'm great, thanks. How are you? I'm awesome. Thanks a lot for asking. The reason I'm calling is because they received a request for two of the Child Safe ID kits on February 2nd. I just wanted to make sure the two kits are correct, right? Yes, that's correct. All right. So now there is a little bit of a difference in the phone call, right? Definitely. I listen to people make phone calls. Which version do you think I heard? Version one or version two? Version one. Version one. Yeah. I heard a lot of, hey, because it was at the end of the day, right? What did I say about phone calls and presentations? It doesn't matter to the client or whoever you're calling what happened two seconds before, 20 seconds before, 20 minutes, 20 hours. Every single time you get somebody on the phone or in your uh, Zoom room, it is the first time that they've ever spoken with you. So it is crucial and critical that we sound upbeat, that we sound like we enjoy what we're doing that we're there for a reason. Now, if I call my kids, I may have a different perspective, right? Like, hey, Taylor, you damaged the car. What's going on? There's no gas in it, right? Different perspective. But if I'm a single person and I want to ask somebody out, I may come across a little differently. So I'm not saying you want to be single and ask somebody out on the phone calls, but you want to sound engaging. You want to sound as if you're a pleasant person that somebody should be speaking with. So here's a very interesting problem. When I make phone calls, before I figured out how to do all that, how did I come across? <clears throat> Barbie Dolliver, how do you think I came across on a phone call? For the first one? I I'm talking about me in general in life. If I were to call somebody, how do you think I come across? Professional. Authoritative, maybe a little bit. Professional, right? Is that going to be very useful when I'm calling somebody on these type of leads? No, probably not. Probably not. Maybe not. Who knows? I may, I may connect with somebody who appreciates that. But I think that the phrase that you get something with vinegar or honey i don't know how it goes but you know where i'm going with it right with vinegar. so I'll, I'll tell you a little secret hold on steve steve you have a question go ahead um i had a, i had a uh, just a quick one um i noticed like your natural speaking voice is like really relaxed and like uh monotone a bit uh but then you know your your pitch voice is like Mm -hmm. You know, like you said, uh, you you put like a lot of energy and like it sounds happier. What are some things that you do? I guess like what what is the what, where is the switch for you? You know, <clears throat> so the switch is in. It, uh, I'll tell you. So let me tell you my story. Then I'll, then I'll tell you what the switch was. So that's a good lead up to it. 
Okay. So I was used to be in the army years and years and years and years and years ago. And when I got out of the army, I was somewhat bright <clears throat> and I got promoted pretty quickly. And I thought, hey, I'm going to go and move up into management wherever I was working. And I did. And it went really well. And then I realized very quickly that people wouldn't do what I told them to do. And I was very confused. I'm like, you know, for the last eight years, people just did whatever I said. As long as it was the right thing to do, they did it. Turns out, as I learned, that uh, those of us now in the civilian world, we don't respond to direction as quickly as I was used to. <clears throat> so I have a very good authoritative voice, and I know how to be commanding if necessary, but for some reason that just doesn't work with people who weren't in the military. So I had to learn, okay, when do I, to your point, Steve, when do I turn it on? When do I turn it off? When does it make sense? When does it not make sense? And it took me a long time to figure out that, hey, I don't want to be a director or directive leadership in a commanding voice because that only appeals at one time. And that's when the group that you're talking to or the person that you're talking to gives you the authority. Does that make sense? We talked about that a little bit the other day. You all have given me the authority as the facilitator of this course, but you can easily take it away. So I can be directive with you. Hey, we need to do this. You need to do a video on a certain day. We're going to practice the script. But if you didn't give me the authority, now I need to encourage you to do things. We need to be participative. So for the longest time, it took me forever to figure that out. And I wasn't in sales at the beginning of my career. Then I went into sales and I quickly realized that it was much more effective to be on, to have a voice, to have a pitch that sounds different than authoritative. So with my kids, couldn't do that. Had to be authoritative, right, when they were young. But with my wife, couldn't be authoritative. I had to have a pitch. I had to be different, <clears throat> right? Happy wife, happy life, all that good stuff. So in the sales environment, same concept. No matter what is going on in your life, if you're not on, if you don't have that pitch, if you don't have that demeanor, you come across completely differently. So on the first one, I was very whatever. The second one, I was more, I think, at least I hope, I'm more engaging, right? I had to learn how to turn that on. It is not natural for me to be that way. In this class, do you know who it's natural for? Come on, anybody know who has that natural effusiveness? Yes. Who? Uh, what's her name? What, look her up. We'll see her. We all agree on um, who it is. It is Erica Price. There you go. Erica Price has a natural effusiveness, right? You want to talk to her because she's nice. She, I can't do that, <laughs> right? That's not me. But what I had to learn is I'm not all the way over here on the spectrum. I'm all the way over here. The spectrum, Erica Price is probably closer over here. What I need to learn how to do was when it was necessary, move myself on the spectrum, get a little bit closer to this. Because I don't think I can change the personality or how I grew up, but what I could do is adapt what I was doing, my behavior, in order to be a little more accommodating, in order to be a little more likable. That's my words for me. I'm not gonna say it applies to any of you, but when I learned how to do that, guess what? I started to have people wanting to talk with me, have conversation with me. We're going to watch a video tomorrow where we talk about the presentation is a performance. Literally, it is a performance. If you think about how I do it and what you just saw me do, I am performing. I'm actually performing with all of you every single day. How do I start out my performance every single morning? Every morning, I'm upbeat. Every what morning. What's that, Greta? What a song. With a song, right? I start off the performance. We're ready to go. Not that you all have to do that, but think to yourself that you need to flip the switch <clears throat> at the point that you're starting to talk to your clients. In this case, we're looking at a phone script. So the moment someone answers the phone, we have to be on. Because if we're not, you're going to have what I did in the first version. The people you're trying to get an appointment with may not be as interested. The other thing is, it doesn't matter the reaction you're getting from the client. 
Last night, <laughs> I heard a guy. So I think Erica was there or whatnot. We heard a phone call and the guy just kind of blew up at one of our tenured agents. Been around for a while, right? It happens. I heard, I heard that. Yeah, you heard it too, right? All right. It happens to us. Phrase I want you all to remember is some will, some won't, so what? It doesn't matter to me if somebody blows up me on the phone calls. I don't take it personally. Because if I want to, I can just resolve that lead. I never talk to that person again in my life. But in my head, that person has potential money. So I'm not going to just kill the relationship. I am going to talk to them and I'm going to be professional and I'm going to keep the performance going. Just like all of you in here. If one of you blew up at me in here, do you think I would blow up right back at you? No, I'm going to handle it professionally. I'm going to be the normal person I'm in that you see every single day, because I believe that you set a standard. The moment we have interaction, we set a standard. If you first met me in the very first day and my standard was down here, what's the likelihood that I could ever get any of you to believe that my standards really up here? Probably slim to none, right? So if I used abusive language, if I cursed, if I did whatever, however you want to look at it, you would think my standard would be down here. And then I'm on. Oh, then the next day, I try to bring the standard up here, and we're like, "Yeah, I'm not buying into that." Conceptually, the same thing with a client. When you first talk to them, either on the phone or in the presentation, you need to set the standard high, so that they believe that that's what you're always going to come to the table with. Steve, did you have another question or comment? No, we turned it off. Okay, so it's really incumbent upon us when we make the phone calls. It is a grind to make phone calls. If you talk with 30 people in a day just trying to set appointments, it's tiring. But the 30th person that you call and talk to may be the person that's about to buy a $4,000 policy of which you're going to make two grand. Some will, some won't, so what? Okay. Not all of us have Erica's ability to be on this end of the spectrum and be naturally engaging and funny and all the rest of that. What we want to do is we don't want to be on Sam's end of the spectrum. We want to figure out how we can move it along and find someplace we feel comfortable with. Because what I'm not asking you to do is be fake. That's not what I'm asking because that'll come across as well. Like, hi, Erica, my name is Sam. How are you doing today? If you saw me doing that in this class, immediately, Sarah Mendenhall, what would you think? That you're just trying to make a sale. Yeah, exactly. So for all of us that have been in sales for a while, at least in the sales world I come from, that's called sale. What it's called is commission breath. Okay, It's a phrase. It means you're getting too close, you're trying too hard, and you're chasing the dollar. That's not why we're here. Yeah, do we get paid really good money for what we do? Absolutely. Do we need to chase it? No. We're taking care of people, whether it's veterans, whether it's anybody else in any other market, we're taking care of them. Okay? So for all of us, when we practice doing this phone script, we want to make sure we're closer to Erica and far away from Sam as much as possible. Okay? <laughs> That's the You're game. making me feel bad. What? <laughs> I'm making you feel bad. I'm giving. So no, it's a compliment, but I'm just saying you're not so. You're not like boring. It's not the worst. Like I don't. You're no, doing great. You, no. You're all the hairstyle um, feel. So you constantly have to be talking to clients. It happens to me all the time. I'm a, I'm a personal trainer, so you always have there to be on. All right. What? Okay. Yes, Erica. I was just gonna say really quickly. One of the things that was really helpful for, for me, um, I, cause I came to sales without a ton of experience when I first got into the field years ago. And one of the things that my manager at the time said was smile. Like when you mm -hmm. ask, when you hear somebody pick up the phone, smile and then start reading yes. because you automatically already lift yourself up by doing that. I, I agree completely. I remember back in high school, I live in California. The senior trip was to go to Disneyland. And when we went to Disneyland, we were required as uh, boys to wear jackets and ties. Why? Because one, guys are less likely to fight if they're dressed up. And more importantly, it's all about the perspective that you have in your head if you're dressed up. So to your point, Erica, if you put a smile on your face for, as you dial or right before you start your presentation, 
it actually is better for you. It puts you in the correct frame of mind. Whereas opposed to if you're like, I got to make another phone call. Hi, this is Sam, right? It just puts you in a different mind space. So yeah, absolutely. If you can smile, if you can relax, put your shoulders back and get ready to go, you're going to do much better than if you are Sam on this end of the spectrum. So for all of us in the class, Erica, this is a compliment. You shouldn't feel bad. Don't be Sam, be Erica. But don't be so fake that you're trying to get to Erica. Just move yourself along on the scale, okay? All right, so let me finish up with the uh, script that we're looking at in terms of the Canadian script. Is it showing? Is it showing? There we go. Now it's showing. All right. So then we say, as you know, the kids are endorsed by, and then we ask their first name again. And I ask, we tell them, hey, John, they do request that both parents are present when the kids are delivered. Why? Because we know people make decisions if they're married, if both parties are together. The worst thing in the world to do is set up an appointment for one person you get through the entire thing, you spend an hour and a half with them, and then they say, hey, this was really good, Sam. Let me talk to my wife. I'll get back to you, right? In a family that has a husband and wife, typically financial decisions are not always made by just one spouse. They're made by both. So then we say, hey, we're having this meet for two reasons. They give you some additional information, and then they get here. Are, is your spouse home right now? And then yes. All the scripts are the exact same from here on out. And the reason for that is now we're setting an appointment, right? So if I come here and I go to the credit union response card script, boom, right here, go ahead and grab the spouse. You're currently working retired. Hey, grab the spouse, do this. So they're all similar. Yellow is a decision point. So if I'm up here and I read this and I say, do you remember filling off that card? If they don't, then I read that. If they do remember filling out the card, I skip the decision point and go right to yes. Okay. Say, do you remember filling out that card? No? Okay, no problem. Let me confirm the information for you. And then I read it all the way down. If the answer is yes, I do remember filling out the card. I just don't read this section right here. Can't believe it's not working. I don't read that section right there. I go to yes and read on. Then I come down here and then I say, okay, here's the best scenario is when you do what's called an OTS or an on the spot. So a lot of you, when you're calling for your first two weeks in class, you're calling on behalf of somebody, <clears throat> on behalf of another agent or your upline. If you're doing that, then your upline may not be available right away. But if you're calling for yourself, okay, so you're calling on behalf of yourself, it's your lead, you want to move to an on the spot appointment, that's the best case scenario. Right? Are you working retired? Oh, I'm retired and Jill is in the living room. Hey, that's great. Go ahead and grab Jill. Put me on speakerphone. We'll get you set up right now and do this Zoom appointment. And then you don't have to read all the rest of that because you're moving into the Zoom. If they're not available, this spouse, or they're not at home or they're working, whatever, then you're going to come down to this section and say, hey, now for your safety and convenience, there's in your benefits over a short Zoom call. It looks like I can take care of this for you online today at X and X time. So this is a very uh, important part. When you are calling people to set up appointments, if they're available and you move into a Zoom, thumbs up. They're going to do the Zoom right then. More often than not, though, they're not available. So now they're going to say, hey, I'm not really available. You want to be in control and you want to give them an option. Not an option to attend the call, but an option for time. So if it's me and I'm calling Rebecca Browning and I say, hey, Rebecca, you know, go to grab your spouse. Oh, they're not available right now. Okay, Rebecca, no problem. Let me look at my calendar, basically. And it looks like I'm available tonight at seven or at eight, which time works best for you. We do that because psychologically, we're still in control that way. And even though you're all new agents or lead packs won't be that large, et cetera, et cetera, you're very busy people and your time is valuable. We want to make sure our clients understand that as well. So if I said, hey, Rebecca, what time are you available on Thursday? What would you say to me, Rebecca? I'd have to like look at my calendar and be like, check back with me later. Right. I'll give you a call back or you can give me a call later. We'll set up a time. You're no longer in control, right? Or I'm no longer in control. 
So what I want to do with Rebecca is, hey, Rebecca, <clears throat> I know you can't do it today. It looks like I have five or six available for you tomorrow. Which time works best for you? Now, Rebecca, instead of thinking any time available on Thursday, she's thinking five or six. Subconsciously, she's also thinking that maybe there's other people that I'm talking to and I'm trying to fit her in. If Becca says, okay, I can't do a five or six, then I can say, well, I, you know, I do have time Friday morning or maybe early Friday afternoon, which time works best for you. You want to maintain control of the timing. doesn't matter what market you're in. So the very first scenario you start off with is now on the spot. Can we do it now? The second best scenario is today. If you can't do it right now, when's your husband or your spouse going to be home? We'll do it at that time. I have six or seven, eight or nine, whatever. If that doesn't work, your third best scenario is the very next day. Here's an interesting statistic for you. Every day that you let the scheduled appointment pass, so if I say schedule for tomorrow, schedule for the next day, every day I push it out, reduces the likelihood that people will show up for the appointment by 12 and a half percent. So every day that you push it out further, if it's two days, that's 25% likelihood they're not going to show up. Most of your uplines will tell you that they don't want you to book an appointment more than one day out. So today's Wednesday. If you're making phone calls tonight, they will tell you don't make any appointment for beyond Thursday because people don't show up. Yeah, William, what do you got for me? Uh, yes, I know we can uh, we can theoretically set up appointments with people to meet with them at any time that they say that they're available. But my question is, is that uh, when you're by yourself, uh, for instance, I'm on the East Coast, uh, what time am I allowed to start making calls? And then also, since I'm taking calls across the U.S., and let's say it's a west coast time or something is there something uh on eapp or or uh on hp pro that's going to tell me exactly uh where they're at and when can i do that so the lead will tell you what city and state they're in and if you're on your mobile planet on your uh, cell phone it will then tell you the time zone as well okay and then you're not allowed to make phone calls past nine o'clock in the time zone of the individual where they live that's the, the typical rule, okay? And what's the earliest? Is it is it basically nine to nine is the, is the rule? Yeah, I would say eight, nine. There's no formal hard rule in terms of how soon you can make it, but it, it, it's got to make sense. You don't want to wake somebody up in the morning to try to set an appointment with them. You're probably going to irritate them, right? I will tell you, veterans, it's more likely to call before noon because they typically are older, so they'll get up earlier and then they're not available. Whereas everyone else is the other way around because they're typically working during the day and they come home in the evening and then they're okay. Yeah. Carrie Quarick, what can I do for you? Um, yes. Yeah, so I, I'm looking at the veteran script. Um, is there a separate script for the appointment setting or you just kind of? No, every one of them, if you look on my screen here, Every one of them has their own phone script. So the veteran has three different types of phone scripts. The PAVIT is for an online lead. The uh, RC vet is for a return card. And then the referral is when a client is giving you a referral. Okay. The credit okay. union has three phone script as well. However, the McGruff and the no-cost legal will kit only has one. So we will be practicing these tomorrow morning we're not going to do them tonight, but tomorrow morning we'll practice them to make sure that we're comfortable and we'll go in breakout rooms and we'll do all that. Does that answer your question, Carrie? Yeah, oh I gosh. appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> I was looking at this and showing you this and I wasn't sharing my screen. So uh, attachment five, six, and seven is for the veteran market for phone scripts. Okay. It's 11, 12, and 13 are for the credit union market. Attachment 16 is for the McGruff, and attachment 18 is for the no cost legal will kits. Okay. Yes, Steve. Um, I wanted to 
ask Will William if he wanted to pair up. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Greta, what can I do for you? Um, when we, there's a part like in the application that uh, it says to freeze that page. How will you do that? You're talking about when you're about to build the plans. And you, yeah. So when you are sharing your screen, the button that you clicked and it says share screen, as you're sharing your screen, that button will change to the word pause screen. And it'll have like a little pause button that you see on a tape deck. That's where you can pause your share. Okay. And that will be, you said, in where you, once you click share screen, it will give you the option. Yes. Okay. The same button and that you put on for share screen right next to it will say pause share. And to uh, record, I'm trying to get the hang of it. I'll work with you tonight, right okay. after class, but the recording function is there. Okay. If it's your Zoom, there's going to be a button down at the bottom and it will say uh, recording and you can record to the cloud or you can record locally to your disk, your okay. hard drive. Okay. Kevin, what can I do for you? Uh, my question is more regarding the will kits. You mentioned earlier that the majority, well, the majority, uh, many people who are requesting the free will kits will be elderly. And it occurs to me that a lot of elderly people are not really computer savvy and they don't have Zoom. And when you are in the phone script trying to set up an appointment, is that a, a typical, well not typical, but does, does that occur often where people don't have Zoom and mm -hmm. you could tell them you can it. download it, but then they're all. Okay, so I wouldn't say it occurs often. Does it happen? Absolutely, it does happen. Uh, but you will know how to use Zoom because you've been using it to do this job. You can show them how to access Zoom on their uh, phone. 70% mm -hmm. of presentations that we do in AO are on the phone. So even if I'm talking to somebody older, as long as they have a smartphone, I can get them onto Zoom. Okay. If I talk to them and they have no capability of Zoom, I'm going to ask, hey, uh, <clears throat> Do you have a family member or a friend or something like that? As a matter of fact, let me show you these phone rebuttals uh, really quickly. So the phone rebuttals are attachment two, and this is what it looks like. When you're making phone calls, one of the objections you can potentially get is I don't have internet. Yeah. Right? I can't get to Zoom. I don't know how to do that. Hey, do you have a cell phone? Yeah, are you calling me on it? Oh, great. If you have a cell phone <clears throat> in this day and age, 98% of cell phones, well, I would say 95% are smartphones. They can access the internet. You may run into some people though that don't do that, whatever. Okay, that happens. Those are leads you're not gonna be able to sell to. Okay. Yeah. yeah. For all of us, the phone rebuttal is something that you should be familiar with. These by no means are comprehensive, but these are typically the objections that you're going to receive when you're trying to set appointments with people on the phone. When we practice tomorrow, whoever you're role-playing with will give you a rebuttal. You have to smoothly be able to handle that rebuttal by coming up with the language here. And again, that's attachment two, regardless of what market that you're in. Greta, your hand is up. What can I do for you? No, it was from earlier, sorry. Oh, okay, gotcha. All right, so, we went through a little bit today. Now we know our scripts, at least through part A. No one's asking you to know everything across the sun, but you need to start practicing this. So for those of you that go back to your uplines, you can practice the phone scripts. You can practice rebuttals to phones. You can practice your presentation scripts. You also need to make sure you get eApp downloaded onto your computer. Make sure you have access to HP Pro and all those things. I would highly advise that you reach out to your uplines and make sure you get a chance to observe a live presentation. Watching Johnny Ning or the other one I'll show you tomorrow, which is Andrew Haskins, those are nice, but those are best case scenarios, right? Best case, we're not going to show you a video of horrible one, uh, but I want you to see what it looks like or, lit, or what it sounds like when the agent runs into either difficulties or objections. 
so you get a sense of what the job is that it takes. Yes, Rebecca. Is there, how do you download eApp? I guess is what I was going to ask. You get with your upline and they will give you the access to the website so you can download it. Okay. Was that first day conversation? Yes. Okay. I wasn't there that day. Oh, That's why. Who's, your, who's your upline, Rebecca? Francisco, I believe, or Begonia, whichever. Yeah. I get them so, mixed up. Yeah. So, talk, well, Francisco is the MJ, Begonia is right below. When you meet okay. with Begonia today, I hope you do. Uh, just ask her, hey, I need to download the app. And, and she may tell you, okay, we're not going to do that until Monday, which is totally fine. I just want to make sure it has a plan so that by Wednesday morning, all of you have eApp downloaded. And you do not need to have your agent ID active in order to use eApp for training. Okay. Nashira, we haven't talked today. What's up? Hi. Um, so I was actually uh, making calls yesterday. And I was, uh, when I was trying to schedule the appointment in the Mobile Planet app, I was confused because the person that I was talking to was in Chicago and they're on central time. So I was wondering if the times in the mobile planet app is my time or will it schedule for their time? Uh, if you don't do anything, the times are your time. So okay. if were you calling on behalf of another agent or your upline? Yeah. Okay, were you, you, did they give you access to training leads to do that? Yes. Okay, so in that case, if you're using your phone, you would just set an appointment based on the client's time and everything else will work out fine. If you don't do that, it'll default to your time and then the client won't, you, you'll have it messed up. You'll be off by one, two or three hours, depending upon where you're at. So you always want to choose the client time. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Awesome. So can somebody tell me the answer to yesterday's homework? My hand went up and then it went down real fast. Now it's back up. Steve, what is the answer to yesterday's homework? Uh, let me pull it up on what I got. I believe from what I remember, I believe it was a one to two percent of their income so what the, the homework question was what what percent people who buy insurance policy what percent of their income do they spend on it is that right yes okay and you say one to two percent erica what do you say um i researched it and it said six percent of income plus one percent for each dependent okay jenny moss do you what did you find out yeah, I had uh, two, oh, am I unmuted? I had two resources that I looked up and it also said 6%, but most of what I found was uh, statistics that are a few years dated. And then um, most of them combined pension, who has a pension, right? So it must be 401k, pension yeah. and life together. Okay. But I also came up with 6% from two and I, I don't know if they're reliable sources, but they came up with six. So here, what about you? I, I had a similar answer with uh, with regards to Erica. It was 6% plus 1% for each dependent. But I also looked at another source, and they were like between 5 to 10%. So they gave me a range. So the Faisal, what about you? Uh, I found statistics showing about 10 to 14%. I wish that people would spend 10 to 14% on insurance. And that would be awesome. That'd be a lot of money, right? Uh, right. Patricia, what about you? I looked at Penn Life and they said 10% of their income. Because Penn Life is, I think, looking at their own policy base, right? I mean, that could be it. The, the oh, answer yeah. that we typically go with is 6%. Now, why do we we go with that? Why is that important? <clears throat> you guys are doing dollar a day, or you guys, all of you are doing dollar a day in the veteran market, or if they're retired dollar a day. Uh, if they're working, then we do our power. But there are going to be clients sometimes who will ask you, well, how much should I be spending? 
So one of the things that you can come back and say, well, statistics say roughly about 6%. So let's say I make $100,000 a year and the average policy cost is $1,500. Is that 6%? How would we figure that out? All right. Multiple How would we figure it out? So we take 1,500, right? And we would divide that so that's for the entire year. We divide that by 100,000, right? So that's about 1.5%. Am I right? Mm -hmm. So that's not getting close to 6%. So where are we getting the 6% factor from? And I'll also say 6% factor is coming from everything that we do, whether it's healthcare, all the rest of it. That's usually what ends up being, and life gets included in that. So whenever I talk to somebody and they ask, well, what should I do? I give them the typical 6%. And usually 6% is outside their budget. But what that does is it has me point them to the recommended amount. That's usually where I end up. I use enhanced to push down the recommended. And sometimes I'll use the essential if I want to make an essential plan <clears throat> to push that up to recommended. Usually recommended is where I want people to typically land unless they have other reasons for why they uh, have other insurance. And then I'll say, hey, because you said, I recommend so that you can. Tried and true sales technique. Use people's statements to support your recommendation. Because you said, Erica, that you felt guilty with me telling you that you were the model person for billions and joyous talking, I recommend that you mute your speakers so that you don't have to listen to me give you compliments right it's a traditional thing that we use all the time in sales because you said i recommend so that you can and you're going to hear me say that you're going to hear me say some will some won't so what all the time all right if you're part of my group which would include greta and definitely include zach you're going to stick around actually you're going to come back at about 2 15 pacific time for all the rest of you, you are free to go. I will let your uplines know that you will be available at 30 minutes past the hour. And for every one of you, regardless if you're with me or if you're on your own with your other upline, I will see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great evening. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Thank you.